Hey, hey, hey. We back at it again for the interactive brain show. Yeah. Apologies we didn't get it done last night, but we're here. We just want to keep the content going. Um, and I think we wanted to do something a little different. You feel me? Uh, make this like purely interactive. So if anybody who's out there listening who wants to participate or add something to the conversation. What up, y'all don't start them? I will be dropping the link um, <laughs> early and often. And yeah, y'all just hit the link and come right on in and just become part of the conversation. Uh, there's no like formal arrangement to this, but we just will be discussing all and every all things and everything concerning the brain, whether it had to do with the brain show, whether it had to do with some other source materials you're familiar about, you know, let's do our thing. But before we continue, yes, Kent, answer to your question, we live, we snapping. Uh, <laughs> just wanted to shout out to the uh, official pseudo killers that's on the panel with me. Um, so Marcus, let them know what it what it is. Yeah, peace to the uh, panel, pseudo killers. Um, to the chat, uh, I'm grateful that we still keeping this content coming, good content. Um, hope some people interact with us, jump on the live, uh, talk about some of the things that they may have came across in their conversations over the past few months dealing with this. Uh, Seven and a half lessons about the brain, but also the subsequent conversations that came out of it. Um, a lot of y'all left questions and things like that during our previous shows. Um, we we will be uh, hopefully addressing some of those questions uh, as uh, new content, new conversations. Um, so yeah, so uh, great for the opportunity. Thanks for all those who are in in the chat in the panel. Uh, kick door Kent low. What happened? Holler at the people real quick. You're on mute, Kent. Uh, yeah, you gave me now. Yes, sir. sir. Yeah, nah, I'm gonna tell you I'm working with this internet connection. What's happening with y'all, man? What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> you know, what I mean, and alive, you know, already. <laughs> Damn. Nah, man, I, I had a, I had a, <laughs> I had a good time um, discussing this book with y'all. Um, the shows that I was a part of, man. Um, mm -hmm. I'm glad that we was able to take it in a different direction, and uh, and really talk about things that uh that everybody could relate to. And I mean, which is their brain. So, um, uh, as far as I, I know, I think we still gonna continue to have conversations about the brain. Uh, even even after we done with this book, you know, I, I mean, we done with it now, but. There's a lot more to talk about, so you know I just appreciate being able to have that conversation with y'all, man. Thank you. I ain't gonna lie. Like, I mean, I think the brain isn't on on ongoing conversation, right? There there are a lot of nuances. There are a lot of implications. Uh, different directions you can take that take that conversation in, but most importantly, I know for me, and I'll speak for me. I, I don't want to have to speak for everyone, but my experience with this conversation with you all is that um, I have a better uh, understanding, a clear understanding on what the brain is actually, what its function is actually, and, and just how to um, utilize that part of the body better. You know, some of those, some of the tools that we can uh, use to make our brain work better for us or what we can do to make our brain work better for us and to last, right? To to combat some of the, the ailments that can, how shall I say, plague our, our brain. I think one of our most important, one of the, if not the important uh, organ in the body. Um, But I was gonna ask you all, like what part of that source material was your favorite? Um, before we get into it, but I know for me, it was definitely, you know, when she got into the parts about how culture uh, creates different minds, um, just how, you know, 
each human's brains were allowed other human brains, meaning how we can affect other people, right? Um, and then and in their mental capacity, or how can we affect people's body budgets, whether it's good or bad. Um, and having the opportunity to speak on ACEs, you know, acquired, uh, excuse me, adverse childhood experiences, because those things have been a part of, you know, some of the work that I've done and, you know, that I think is extremely important for people to understand and have a grasp. And then also, you know, know the tools that they can utilize if they're having issues. Um, but uh, Chalumboy, what was your favorite section of the source material, so to speak, that really, really spoke to you? Um, Mine was the um, the section where she talked about uh, your, br your brain predicts almost everything. And mm. she gave the story of the soldier. Oh, yeah. Staked a lot of little child. Mm -hmm. And um, just how that whole thing became, uh, I, I would say how the environment shapes how your brain predicts and mm -hmm. then that, the errors that can come from it. So I think that was one of the, I, I don't want to say, uh, I, I, I'll say it's one of the hardest things it was for me to accept. Mm. And we'll talk about later some of the implications of that. That's was that yeah that that was pretty dope chapter for sure. It was a lot lots of dopeness in the source material, but definitely. Um, Kick Dolo, what was like one of your favorite parts of this source material? Now you already know that uh the airport section man, I, you know how the, the <laughs> brain has them them uh, hubs. Yeah when yeah. Major hubs goes down man. It, it kind of just explains when you look at um people with brain damage, um. You know, after reading that part, it helped me understand a little bit more was, what was going on with them. Mm -hmm. um, another one was that, um, you know, when you, uh, you know, our, our body budgets working together, our brains working with other brains um, about, you know, you lose a loved one and you wonder, or, you know, you lose a best friend, maybe not even a death, you know, maybe, right. you know, just, you know, uh, whether it be an ex or whether it be a uh, friendship that broke or, um a uh, family member or whatever, you know what I'm saying? A close loved one that you that's no longer around and you get that hurtful feeling because it was part of your body budget. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It was like, this is like a, a thing with your brain going on there. It's not just, oh, you know, you said because they left. It's like, no, they was actually part of what kept you balanced. Right. I mean, so yeah, I think that yeah, that opened up. That was, that was uh, some pretty interesting material right there. I think that last part was one that, that you know, well, we um, got into the part about whether <laughs> I, I think we kind of made a little motto out of it. Like, what kind of person are you? Are you the person? <laughs> <laughs> are you the person to add to someone's body budget? Are you the type of person to take away from it? You know. What I'm saying? And I think, and I think we do both. Though I think, you know, yeah, yeah, you know, you got people that that really just lean into that taking away from. But <laughs> I think everybody at some point, like. And you wouldn't even know it, you know what I mean? It could right, be, right, right. it could just be how you interact with other people or how they perceive you. You know what I'm saying? You could be one of the best people in the world, but somebody might not like the way you you look or way you dress or just Damn. your confidence. So you yeah. might take away from their body budget just doing some positive shit. But how you look? <laughs> yeah, I hope I ain't taking away from nobody body budget for how I look. That's oh boy, that's crucial. Nah, but you know there's some people that you know that's <laughs> out there. They be like, yo, I don't like it. I don't. Be like, damn, why you on? Yeah, I, I just don't. I, I don't like the way she. Yeah, I know, <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, you got people out there like that or don't like the way somebody face look or something. You know what I mean? So yeah, Roger um, that. But yeah, um, man. Um, yeah, you. I think. I think when we had that show, we was talking about how, you know, just be mindful of that and try to add to people's body budget throughout the day rather than take away from them. Correct. You know. Absolutely. Um, and I think uh, jump in, Marcus, or take over. But the last thing I want to say, I think that's why it was important to introduce uh, ACEs, uh, Adverse Childhood Experiences, and understand how us as adults can be uh, primarily affecting a child's body budget. Oh, oh, facts. You know, um, and, and as the children get older, uh, you know, particularly as parents or caregivers and how our undiagnosed or um, undealt with, you know, 
childhood traumas can actually, you know, um, manifest in, in at, at, you know, at later times in our lives mm -hmm. while we are trying to raise children or be mentors or, you know, teachers or whatnot, and how that can have an effect on a child's experience and their yeah. Body budget. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty big. That's pretty big when you think about how we affect kids, man, because, you know, growing up, we didn't even understand how it affected us, you know, how, you know, we were treated, whether it be from adults or other right. children, you know what I'm saying? And um, it explains a lot of the um, the behaviors as adults um, uh, based on how you got treated as a kid. Correct. You know what I mean, uh, whether you was beat all the damn time, whether your parents talked down to you all the time. Mm -hmm. Um, just depending on, you know, every little thing mattered and shaped you to be who you are today. And mm -hmm. like some people grow up with issues and don't even realize like, yo, that's from when you was four years old and your, your mom <laughs> never picked you up. Yeah. You know and not I mean? laughing she, oh. at it, but are, <laughs> like when we're giggling, it's because of the realization I think is more of a personal realization because we're reminiscing. So don't people take offense that we're like, oh, you're right. Ha 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 ha. No. Because that was like right in your face, like, yeah, buddy, that's what it is. Uh, or even yeah, for yourself, that's what it's always been. I'm just saying that to the audience because I know we're kind of having this fun banter with the conversation, yeah. but it is deep. But that's correct, right? That's, mm -hmm. that's yeah, like, facts. like, you know, you know, like, like, it, and then makes you look at how you treat your kids to be more uh, conscious of what you do around them or do to them, um, how you treat them and stuff and stuff like that, because. Once you realize, like, yo, I can shape this person, this the little things I do can shape this person, you know, to turn out negative or mostly a, a negative person or mostly a positive person, then you mm -hmm. just you take the steps and you research, okay, what ways do I need to go about raising my child? You know what I'm saying? I know back in the day it was like, yo, they act up, beat the hell out of them. You know, right. get that belt, get that switch. And then we find out later on, like, that might not have been... <laughs> the best thing, right? Yeah, you might have traumatized. You know what I mean, it's like you know, what I mean, you might look at a tree and just get irritated or something. You don't even realize, like, yo, your brain looking at that switch, like, yo, you don't run with it. Yeah, that used to tear your ass up. <laughs> no, but um, <laughs> go ahead, my bad. I was just gonna say, yeah. I mean, I want you to finish, and then I'm gonna add after that, and we ain't no rush here. Yeah, no, nah, I was just that's all I was really saying. Um, just being mindful of how you treat your kids. How you talk to them, uh, you know, you got some people that are, you know, hey, you know, don't do that, you know, uh, why are you mad? You know, you know, don't, and we used to laugh at, you know, we used to say, oh, that's a, a white people thing that, you know, they talk to their kids like, yeah, like, ah, are you okay, talk little Johnny? <laughs> and then, you know, black parents would be like, sit your ass down and shut the fuck up, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and, and we, we, you know, that was kind of like a, a thing in the black community, but we didn't realize, like, yo, that's, we might be causing some toxic. Uh, traits or, or yeah. toxic uh, activity up behind that, you know? Behaviors, toxic behaviors. Yeah, behaviors. And, yeah. and stress, right? Because we talked about, you know, we can, we, you can be creating toxic behavior, you know, amongst the younger children of the ones that, you know, you're caretaking, and you could be contributing to their toxic stress, mm -hmm. you know? Um, but one of the things I wanted to add, I, and, and this to the point of you, Marcus, too, and I don't know, maybe, you know, we could do that interview here. Ain't got to be all of us, but I think it should happen because I could see understand why some people don't find interest in it, and I get it. But I also think that it uh, leads to the point of the show and those points we've been speaking on, you know, about how we affect other people's body budget, you know, how maybe how we uh, d discipline our children may not, may not be... May not be it. That may not be it. That may not be what we want to do, right? And so, how do you get, how do you get past that? How do you learn differently? Because I mean, that's kind of a generational curse. You feel me? Mm -hmm. And I'll say that because yes, it's been black, it down. Black, black parent. But I mean, I kind of recognized a long time ago because I can count how many times I got beat on one hand. It wasn't many, right? Mm -hmm. um, but as going through these classes and understanding, you know, like human behavior and different things, especially when you're dealing with childhood, uh, child development, I realized early, like in college that, oh, that's not good. So I started advocating for it a long time ago, you know, not even knowing what to call it. 
but you know, uh, for black people in particular, everybody does it. It's just not a black people thing. Let's just say that too. You feel right, me? Right. Even why? Well, I mean, I speak to black people. I know. I, but you I get. What, what I, know, yeah. I know exactly what you meant. Can't we? You know. But to be one hundred percent clear, you know. Uh, you right though. Right, and so. I realized then that regardless, because I mean, I didn't, I didn't do some white people that told me some stories. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> you sure your mama wasn't black? Like, you front for real? You know? Oh, no, nah, you go down to that south now, man. Shit. Yeah, right. Wait don't they do, turn us up. Don't do it, right? Yeah. But <laughs> yeah, and sometimes in the worst way. So be careful. But, you oh, know, man. we could talk about you know, the, the this is a generational curse going back to slavery. You feel me? Because think about it. When you're talking about whooping and spanking, whooping, where do you think that get it from? And what? why were slaves even whooped? It was for, uh, um, it was for you know, compliance. You feel me? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And they whooped you so you could comply, right? So you could be obedient, right? To to strike a certain fear in you. And, and some parents I, I actually, you know, would use that, you know, like, I want, I want to strike the fear in you, like the fear of God type, you know, stuff or whatnot. But I think if you know the 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 least that we can do uh, as PK, what we always do, not only provide you with the experts that can also provide some helpful things, but also uh, provide you provide you with professionals that have the skills to teach and train better ways. So I'm hoping sooner or later that we can get uh, we have a. a he he's a, a a child advocate and he deals with soft parenting skills, and he's pretty awesome. And he's um, a friend of mine, and I do want him to come on the show and and speak to that point and all things about uh, what soft parenting really is. And yeah, get him on. That we spoke spoke about. Hmm. I said, yeah, I'll let him. I should get him on as soon as possible. I mean, he he waiting on us. He I already I already put my order in. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, he already he already like ready to go. You feel me? Like mm -hmm. I always, you know how I do it. I try to like, you know, fill out a person if I'm interested. You feel me? And he he like gone home ready to go. So I think that's something for me that's important because I don't know how people do it in their house, and I'm not passing any judgment. But again, we're just gonna offer you know solutions. I think a lot of times in the conversation we could talk all day long, right? But if there's no mm -hmm. solutions had or no programs of advocacy rendered, then how helpful is that, right? Right. And then, and you know, some people may have never heard that. You know, I ain't saying, mm -hmm. you know, nobody. I'm just saying so it might be one person out there like, damn, I never realized that that affected um, our kids in that way or, or yeah. adults in that way. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I mean, it's, it's good to even mention it just to put it out there and let it let the let it be exposed. Mm -hmm. You know, and you know how they had a good saying go once you now you know not no one's have to battle and all of that, you know. Oh, yeah. once you know better, once yeah, you know better, you do Joe. better and all that, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Wait a minute, that's not G.I. Joe. Not, that's yeah, not. I'm tripping. I'm not G.I. Joe. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no one's have to battle. So a lot of that, um a lot of that came out of a, a study in the early 1900s. Um mm. it's called Baby Oliver. Mm. Um, it's it's a ridiculous, ridiculous experiment they did with a, a human child. Um, Go ahead and talk about it for real, for real. Get into it, Marcus. It was it's crazy. So if uh if you could just uh share my screen, Juju, please. If it's not too much trouble. Okay, thank you. Um, so this is the little Albert experiment. Um, it was a psycho it was a, a psychology uh, experiment uh, by John Watson. He's a behavioralist, and there's two branches of behavioralism that uh, kind of argue with each other, right? And one is come out of the school of thought like Watson and all of them, and that's they, they got the idea that if, if I could have a child and raise them in a box, I can raise them to be anything possible. Um, crazy, uh, but that's one school of thought. The other is the ethologists that, that believe you should study animals, all animals in, in their natural environment to get a better understanding of, of behavior. So that's, that's part of it. But this, it, nevertheless, this experiment 
uh, with little Albert was crazy because what they did is they basically conditioned. Um, they would put different items around him periodically, time, and then with certain ones like uh, the white rat, they would then uh, bang loud noises from behind him, so he was unaware. Um, the strangest thing about it is, is that from this point on, they followed. Well, they didn't follow. They actually lost track of him, but later. Uh, came back in contact and figured out which Albert it was. Um, even as an adult, he still had that traumatizing fear. And so he would be anywhere and see a rat or a mouse and would just go straight panic. His wife would talk about it over and over. And this is called classical conditioning. So when we talk about trauma, that, that's actually what we're doing. We're conditioning our, conditioning our children to trauma. Um, that goes with uh, things like uh, domestic violence, drug abuse, alcohol abuse, even down to the verbal, uh, even even your language, your verbal abuse, your psych psychological uh, abuse, right? Um, we condition them to these things and then condition them based on those responses. And so... Um, this is one of the early cases of where they talk about it. And again, that's, that's little uh, Albert. You can look at it uh, anytime you want to get more information on it. Um, this is one of the areas in which ethics got involved in. So they no longer do these type of experiments, um, which I think is a good thing because they literally traumatize this child um, just to see if they can condition them like they do dogs. So some people may argue why why they're they're not so easy to say we're beyond. This is one of those cases where he was conditioned like they conditioned dogs, literally. And he had the same similar um, visceral response that dogs would have. Um, so it's the ethics. Here, <laughs> um, here's, here's the, you can look at this section. I'll drop the link in the chat and you can actually look at it. Um, and actually read up about it, um, about his life, what happened to him. Um, and you can find out what kind of conditions he's had uh, as he grew over. Um, and so this is where they tell you about, in this section of the article, about how they um, lost track of him, then found out who he was, and then seeing that he was still conditioned on that. So... There y'all go. I'll drop it in the chat for y'all to look up and read um, just to get a better idea where some of the thoughts came from, what what experiments was involved in um, trauma-based, well, basically their understanding of conditioning and things like that now and, and some of the dangers that can happen when you do these type of things. All right, because that brain trying to predict and it's predicting that that rat is the the cause of some something negative happening to it, right? Yeah, exactly. So they condition him to believe that if you've seen a rat, he would get this startled response. It's really um, the amygdala that that triggered that 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 response, and so mm. it was immediate fear and fear and and terror that was associated. And you can mm -hmm. imagine because remember we talked about in a book she talks about the spotlight. So you can imagine what happens that when that spotlight is being um, um, programmed into the brain, you could say, that you have this trauma-based experience in which you get loud noises. And she talks about that also in the book, like living in sometimes inner cities. Like I grew up, I was, um, my my window faced uh, the McDonald's drive through And this is back when people would do the parking lot pimping thing. So late at mm -hmm. night, they would all drive into the parking lot and play their music loud and drink and get rambunctious and then start shooting in the air and all like that oh man yeah 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 so, <laughs> uh she talks about that that like that's that's also conditioned to somewhat trauma you know what i mean and it affects mm -hmm. how your spotlight is um so yeah so that's that's it so i'll put that in the chat for everybody so they can go ahead and look at it there's things you that happen at that age that you don't even remember that still affect you you don't even remember remember it to even put a um 
a, a, a cause to it to say, oh, I'm I'm scared of this because this happened when I was a kid or this type of area I grew up in. You know what I mean? Exactly. You don't even know. Like, you don't know why you don't like tomatoes or you don't know why you don't mm-hmm. like this. You, you just assume it's always been that. But you could have had a traumatizing experience where you ate a bad tomato and it made your stomach upset. And from that moment on, every time you see a tomato, it, it drives you crazy. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. Yeah, it's crazy, man. And, and but how much of that gets passed down through, um, like, hereditary? Like, do you think, like, um, I, and I don't know how true this is, but I know they tried to make a connection with, like, um, with slavery and black folk and saying that, um, just tell me if you ever heard any connections to that, like, uh, from our, you know, our ancestors to people that's living today, like inheriting some fears or, or traumas from that. Yeah, I, th- I think behavior is passed down. You you know, to people tend, in general, to not fade away too far away from <laughs> what your parents did. And if you if you think about that, if we were uh, over, and it's not one generation, it's generations of enslavement and trauma and unwarranted violence. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that that would definitely play a role. They're looking into that matter of fact now. In the epigenetics area, it's a sister who got a lab in New York who's doing the generations. And I think she's doing a third generation where she did trauma fed with mice. And you can actually see specific um, genetic changes. And so that's, Mm. again, that's that's the thing. But Dr. Joy, uh, the the Gray Joy or the Goy, I can never pronounce her last name. It's, It's just hard. You know, the doctor out, out in California, she wrote the post-traumatic slave syndrome. Okay. Yeah, she actually made that 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 connection a long time ago, that some of the behaviors that we see in, in our parenting style were what, what we call uh, protective methods, you know? So you would, yeah. um, I think one of the examples she gave was, um, yeah, exactly, Rashawn. I, I can't pronounce that, the, the groy. I'm hoping I'm pronouncing it right. Maybe you know, forgive me. Blame blame it on my uh, speech, not on my heart. Um, she uh, she put in there one example was like how sometimes black parents uh, uh, would say um, when their child is doing good, they would they would say, "Oh, that girl, that child, mm, he gives me a hard problem," and she breaks down some of that dynamics, and she says that's associated with when a slave master would come to a child and say, well, that child works hard in order for you to maybe hinder him from selling that child or taking that um, young girl as a fancy girl. um, You would downplay her attributes. And she says that behavior pattern is still with us today. If you can get what she's saying. Yeah, that's crazy, man. Yeah. I'll rob the I'll drop the, the name of that book too in the chat. Um, it's definitely, definitely a great read. Um, she gives like numerous examples, not just one. She gives like numerous examples of that process. And, uh, you know, she, she's, she makes them very, very, very valid. I tell you what, her points are much more valid now that we did this seven and a half lessons. <laughs> I, can, I can tell you that. There, there may have been some people who thought she was wilding <laughs> but i guarantee you after this book <clears throat> excuse me they definitely don't don't feel the same and there's, and there's concrete evidence to support that my bad somebody called in the middle of you um because i'm on my phone but um i don't know if you said they had like concrete evidence to support what she's saying yeah, well, um, you know, it's sociology, so it's all, you know, with sociology, those soft sciences, it's more um, deductive reasoning more so than uh, than uh, inductive reasoning based on empirical data. But um, after looking at it from both sociology, neurology, and psychology, 
I think she built a beautiful case because now we definitely know that culture does transmit through generations, mm. right? And they do shape shape how you uh, perceive the world. Mm. And, so, Facts. and so I think her case is definitely more valid now that we've, uh, well, I always did believe it, but after we did this seven and a half lessons, I think um, you can see the process that it would take. For yeah, that to yeah, be yeah. I think, I think they gave more empirical data to verify and validate her claim. That's yeah. pretty dope. Um, before we move on, though, I, I do want to remind the chat that this is the interactive brain show. So we're just pretty much talking about past uh, shows that we did, some of the source material or <laughs> source materials used for the show, and then our personal experience of how we can see that in our lives. So. There's no like official uh, setup or how we construct it. We're just having an open talk about it. We wanted to keep you know the conversation going. Um, one that is not about all the rah rah and drama and the toxic energy of the community, but uh, <laughs> um, conversations that actually can uh, be of some usefulness and benefit to us. So. Anybody, I mean, anybody in the chat, whether you are familiar with the source material or, or the conversation or not, if you have some questions, just please do hit the link, join us in the panel so we can just have an open dialogue, um, you know, because you might have a, um, a, a take on it that we might not see or something that we may have omitted or forgot to discuss concerning, you know, the source material, the brain you know, his functions, his operations, and some of uh, the social and cultural implications to be had uh, uh, with him for the brain, so to speak. So yes, please do hit the link I've put in the chat. I'll keep putting in there um, often enough. And yeah, let, let's, let's talk about it for a little bit. Um, but I do want to talk about, so I'm be a little messy here. Um, what's up with our next conversation? You know, uh, with depth of expertise, because I'm really excited to uh, discuss that. I think I've probably listened to that book already like five times on Audible, and I never get tired. Like every time I listen to it, it I learn something new. Um, but do you do you think there's some things that we can tie into that from um, the brain show, Marcus, as far as the depth of expertise? Like, do you see an overwhelming connection uh, now? Um, can you illustrate that for us a little bit? Yeah, because one thing you talked about was uh, cognitive bias and how that plays. And if you remember, we did do the brain show, and even some of the subsequent conversations came up. I kept bringing up this one term called Dunning-Kruger. Dunning-Kruger effect is going to be very, very, very significant in the book, The Death of Expertise. And it is a human um, vulnerability. It, it evolved um, in humans. Some, some would argue maybe it's a after effect of other, other brain processes. But nevertheless, um, that's definitely going to tie in. And then there's there's another section that he talks about our social interactions. And this one, I don't think, um, well, of course, you said you didn't listen to it five times. Um, but we wait for a few more people to get, get a little further ahead in the discord. But in this one, is very fascinating. So let's say you're sitting there holding a conversation with an expert. And the expert is trying to explain something. And you are maybe not in direct conflict with what they're saying, but you're just holding this conversation. Two, they, they, they notice that two things occur. One, the expert downplays their expertise mm -hmm. as, a, as a method not to offend. Right. Right. And then, uh, and then the other person, right, upplays their knowledge as <laughs> if say we are, um, that I'm important. And so what ends up happening is, is that the expert, though they know, you know, it's, it's a funny, fascinating thing. But they put that based on the evolutionary process. And what is that? We grew, we evolved as social beings. And so mm -hmm. we look for cohesion in our society. Whether we like it or not, whether we want to accept it or not, that's just 
humans. <laughs> now we do do the us versus them quickly, but that's more of a protective measure. If you would think about um, evolving where where there's limited resources, you would definitely uh, um, you would definitely need to uh, protect what little resources you have to ensure that 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 your or generary your, your children uh survive and so you get this us versus them but in your and own cohesion unit you would need to be able to break that and then become submissive somewhat hey and mark you know what's funny about that yo so uh like you, how you said they down the experts downplay their expertise and the people that that they know it all like make it seem like they're this great <laughs> Uh, a person with knowledge on the subject, even though they don't have the expertise, they still, you know, what I mean, they they big themselves up to a certain point. Um, it goes the same thing with books. You know how uh, the experts don't put on there that you know I'm a doctor or you know all of the accolades that I've gotten or whatever, right? But then you look at the people that write books that really not experts on the subjects and, and more than likely get it wrong. Put all kinds of doctor so and so, uh, uh, you know. Uh, they have this accolade and and yeah, you know I mean, so I think that's that's kind of a telltale sign. I think um, we even said back in the day, like if you see a person put on um, uh, uh, whatever their expertise is on the cover of the book, then you kind of already know, like, all right, yeah, this person kind of they flim flamming. They already trying to get the credibility for what they writing before we even read the material. You ever heard that? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. You know, this is, but the thing that's strange about it is, and I find it fascinating to a degree, it's not new. Booker mm -hmm. T. Washington um, wrote about it, saying, hey, man, y'all keep building these fake schools, <laughs> calling the universities. Just, yeah, yeah, he, he already wrote about that, John. He, he said, man, knock oh, it off. Oh, man. Yeah, what's up the, the fake yeah. universities and yeah, the, yeah. Uh, all that the professors and the doctors this one you know and you like yo so what what's your uh you know what's your doctor oh i'm not a real, a real doctor they just call me that because you know around the hood you know i'm the knowledgeable one crazy man they, he talked about a story about a student who who failed out of his 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 uh college tuskegee and he's doing this traveling and he's going to different communities trying to help them out. And they go to this neighborhood, this area, black black town. They're like, Yeah, yeah, we hear you, but we already got a teacher. We got a professor over here at the university. So he go over there and look at it, man. He snapped on that dude, man. <laughs> he got in the book and everything. Said, What kind of nonsense is this going on? Hey, look, all their all their expertise ain't even in the field that they, they that they writing the book on, but they still put the doctor on there anyway. And it ain't even in that in that field. Exactly. It's a long, long, long road, man. Um a long road. But I, again, I don't I you know it, it's not new that we've had that going on for quite some time. If you ever look at something called uh it's called speaker box, it's talking about Harlem. Back when they was doing um, the, uh, they used to go on like 125th somewhere around there, and on corners they would just uh, stand on soap boxes and, and and speak their speech. You know what I'm saying? That's mm -hmm. where uh, uh, Hubert Harrison, um, one of the black philosophers and humanists, early on uh, got his notoriety from, and that's actually where Marcus Garvey was introduced to too. I like how you said that humanist. <laughs> yeah. um, that's that's where he, you know, and, and you read about what's going on. They had fake shamans over there, fake Egyptian adepts. And I'm saying this <laughs> back in the 1919, 1920s. And I'm saying, man, we still got them charlatans around now. Dr. Sabi, Commission Adept. Umar Johnson. It's the same scam and stuff over and over and over again. And it's somewhat concerning to me is that we haven't learned from that. But then again, you know, we're accustomed to it. You know, we're raised in these type of ultra oppressive, you could say, 
limited environments or so. But I, I think um, I think majority of people um haven't heard that though. Like um majority of people ain't really hearing, you know, the the the, the tricks to look out for that some of these guys use. That's why they're so successful because they could take advantage of, of majority of the population um, because they just not trained for that. You know, what I mean, you know, we, we preach the scientific literacy um, and just being a real majority of the world isn't scientifically literate. Not to pat ourselves on the back and I'm like, you know, we ain't ex uh, exceptional or nothing like that. But, you know, we just happen to fall into a place where we can learn things and get the tools. And know, all right, you know, you got to look out for this. When they come with this, uh, you know, they flim flam and they scam it. Or, you know, if they ain't backing that up with a source, then, you know, so, you know, everybody, everybody's not really privy to that type of uh, way of looking at information. Well, that's, that's part of, that's part of the, 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 the overall conversation, right? Basically, um, and, and, and even in the depth of expertise, where are we going to next? He talks about uh, the dumbing down of the American voter. I, he, he talks specifically about that in connection to that, that we may have much, much more um, information available to us, but it's not actually making us any smarter. It right. And making us a little bit more susceptible to the f foolery. I think it's making us lazy in a sense. And, you know, because I don't know, it's like technology is a blessing and a curse type of situation from what I'm saying, but I do like how he starts in, in that um, source material speaking on, you know, now that we have more people who are educated, you know, by university college standards and how that um, can be a problem, you know, because now everybody thinks they're an expert. You know, you can walk around here with an associate's degree, <laughs> you're an expert, you feel me? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you got a bachelor of science. So by that, you know everything in science, you know, right. because we've heard this, right? How many times have we heard, I have a degree in computer science. So I guess, yeah. and, and the subject matter has nothing to do with computer science. You feel me? So is it yeah, weird? I read, like, a, I a, read a hundred. Or I read a hundred books. I read a hundred books, but they don't tell you like, yo, what was the quality of, quality of the books you read? Mm -hmm. You read a hundred books right. with garbage in it. <laughs> it could be a, could have been a hundred Nuwafian books, and yeah, yeah. you, you got to sit down. You you I, had a line for that, man. Nobody... Listen, I, I remember my homeboy, right? <laughs> you know, cat. I, I ain't talked to him in a long time, but I remember he was trying to get me on the uh, Nuwafian shit. And I looked at the book, you know, looked through it and all that. I'm like, oh, this, this is a little weird. You know, what I mean, I ain't really, I wasn't really feeling it. <laughs> Them weird and, pictures on the front. Yeah, the, the pictures oh, yeah. was all drawn and with no real pictures, and he got a lot of tabloid pictures in there, right? Uh -huh. So, but I remember him telling me like, "Yo, this is the smartest guy in the world. He wrote four hundred over four hundred books, and nobody has done that." And and I'm like, "Yeah, already <laughs> anybody can write. I ain't gonna say anybody can write four hundred books, but if you anybody got a lot of garbage to crap. write, you copy and paste it, and you do yeah. it all the time, third, like, and you write like ten page. Come on, man. We've you know seen I mean? it so done that, already, right?" They right, then you pick up selling a book for fifty dollars. Ain't talking yeah. about nothing but trash. No, but trash they, but he, but he, but he wrote. It. I don't even know how many books the dude did write. I know he probably put out a bunch of material, but it shows that yo, this dude could write all of the things that he wrote. I, I could care if he wrote four hundred books, but it's full of garbage. It's like this, you know what I mean? So, so just how many books you write, you write doesn't um, attest to your intelligence. You know, what I mean, it's the it's the the content within the books that you write. Mm -hmm. Fact. You know, what I mean, and if it's backed up with evidence and and and, and research, you know, mm -hmm. what I mean, so yeah, but um, yeah. I just wanted to say, Ronald Birkins, you have to hit the panel in order for us to engage in the question. <laughs> yeah, Robert put that long ass question. <laughs> Come on, bro. <laughs> Go ahead, hit that link, Ronald. Yeah, <laughs> Lee, you got the longest. I know, I know you watch other stuff. <laughs> I don't already seen you, but you got to hit that link. <laughs> if you want us to engage in the question, <laughs> this is the hey, interactive um, brain show, hence the interactive brain show. <laughs> so he, he did. Uh, so he asked about the, I know he probably gonna hit the panel. You know, Robert always come, come on. Come on, Ronald. Um, he asked about, 
the implants could be used to change the way someone thinks or change their personality. Mm-hmm. Um, I I haven't seen that. Maybe somebody else has. I don't know. Maybe Marcus could tap in. I know I did see something um, where they said they have an implant that they could put in your in your brain or something and uh, make you do something like make your your hand move or something like that. For paralyzed people, I've seen that. They they just yeah, have, like without you even. Um, no, nah, oh. this was like without you even. Um, well, yeah, you probably yeah, you're right on what you're saying. I'm saying this guy was like, uh, they, this is like a, a regular per like the person whose arms and everything is moving, right? Mm-hmm. And he put the thing in his head and it did something, gave it an impulse or something. Oh, involuntary and movement. Moved. Yeah, and his hand. Well, no, his hand moved, and he didn't will it. He didn't do that. I don't, I know Marcus probably can can clear that up for me. I think Sapolsky might have been talking about that, but you know how we. You know how people go when we when we oh, mention like the name, right? There's some type of um syndrome or um I forgot. Yeah, it's like something they did to make the person I move. I forgot what they would what they called it though. Um and I, I'm not phantom, talking about the like study. Phantom signal or some some help yeah, us out, like Marcus. That. But I do I remember what you, you were heard that though, right? About. I don't know if we messing it up a little, but um the only thing that I know is to to the point of his question though um before marcus jumped in is this situation i've seen it more than twice about a, a woman who had a stroke so I, I, I you know of course she has some uh brain damage in, in some of the areas uh for like um motor skills and speech and things like that and they have put this implant in her brain um and i can't tell y'all how it it functions and give you the, the the low down. My apologies, I can't. But for whatever reason, it allows her to communicate with speech by using an AI generated um, avatar. Okay, right. so it's in her brain. But I guess while she's thinking of words or whatnot, it's actually uh, having the avatar speak out what she's thinking because she's unable to speak. So I've seen mm-hmm. that and and. That that's a little bit to his point, but um, that that has to do with like medical usage or. You um, talking about what um what uh, your boy got? Uh, what's the guy in the wheelchair? Uh, like Stephen Hawkins. Hawkins. Yeah, Stephen Hawkins. Yeah, something like that, and um, it's some other like I know that they are testing and doing uh, um doing some testing and for tools or, or scientific tools that. People that have certain disabilities can can utilize to help mm-hmm. them uh, communicate or just you know move around and different things like that. Whether it has to do with the, some technology to use for their body for body movement and function, you get mm-hmm. what I'm saying, or whether it has to do with them to be able to uh, communicate, uh, whether it be yeah. through an AI avatar or whatnot. I, I have seen that on uh, not just the woman. I've seen her like a couple times, but um, on some other uh, subjects who have different, uh, how shall I say, physical disabilities in some place and how they're utilizing technology uh, by way of some type of, you know, brain implant to, to right. bodily functions or speech. Yeah, right. I'll tie it up. Um, peace to, to Ronald. How you doing? Welcome to the panel. Hey, <clears throat> peace, everybody. Hope, hope up, everybody's man? having a good day. Yeah, wonderful yes. day. Excellent, excellent. Um, mm-hmm. I was going back and forth between a couple of shows, but uh, I'm going <laughs> to give uh, give uh, Black Egypt a rest. rest Man, today. <laughs> don't you, you're not allowed to mention that over uh, the world. Oh, well, that was, hey, 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 Ron, hey, Ron, you got to know when you're being when you're being lured in, man. When you yeah. you're being lured into the trap, <laughs> it can, it, can uh, it is um, because. Can be emotional, but uh, let's uh, stay out of it for a while. Yeah, yeah, just a short little, you know, respite. I think, I think they, I think they get beat down so bad that where they still trying to hang on to a little bit of life, so they just keep on trying to pick a fight when the fight is over. With. But I mean, you know what I mean, yeah. But, it's, but uh, Ronald, how yes. how does the conversation help us though? The one that can't mention. It, how I how, how it does it help us? How can we benefit? Yeah, no, yeah. I, don't I mean, uh, Ron. Yeah, I don't think it does help us ultimately. I think it's uh, um, toxic. For, for, yeah, for me, it's a it's a no win scenario, and 
No, it, 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 it would actually be a good conversation if the negativity wouldn't so, you know what I mean? But it's a toxic um, It's kind of like yeah. you can't get away from it, though. I feel like no matter how hard people have tried to go into a different direction, it's just toxic. But mm. yeah, I mean, if you kept it on, it, if you kept, kept it, you know, just just purely on the intellectual level where mm -hmm. everybody was just given sources and facts and staying level headed, then great. But when it gets you to take people, it. Uh, name calling, you know, <laughs> and, and look, think about it like this, yo, you taking away people's $5,000 ticket got uh, uh, Egyptian oh. trip sales. <laughs> yeah, you, got that, when you got a trip to that you bring people to Egypt with four thousand a pot. Yeah. Somebody tell you that them niggas ain't black. <laughs> yeah, I can see where that can be uh, yeah. a little bit problematic and uh, you want to yeah, protect man. you know you always want to protect your gold in the other box. direction, Kent. You yeah. Nah my bad. Protect the gold. Oh man, I forgot you hey, my bad you I forgot you <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm on that side, but I don't. But you're going for a different reason. You're going for a different. Yeah, reason. I mean, for different reasons, and also I don't. Uh, for, for me, it it doesn't uh, it doesn't change uh, my the fundamental things that I believe in in terms of of science and scientific literacy and those types of things. Mm -hmm. uh, my whole argument about Black Egypt is always I've always tried to talk to them. Can't say that word. Oh well, and I'm so serious. In terms, of, yeah, I know you are. I'm so uh, serious. So, <laughs> But, but my arguments, are, I always try to catch my arguments in what I consider to be reasonable scientific uh, uh, methods. But that's neither here nor there. It's this, this discussion tonight is about the brain. And I think you guys have an excellent show here that uh, really, ultimately, I think, moves us forward uh, right. in terms of our you know, intellectual uh, uh, thinking and the way that we can progress as, as people. I think this is one of the things that uh, you guys talk about. Some things that that are not, you know, well talked about or talked about enough in, in our community. So yeah. right. that's why that's why I'm interested in, in these types of discussion. This this show, the show about um, uh, you know astronomy and uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. stars. Those things. Yeah, are boy, that show very is fire. Very interesting. Yeah. So I think that you know I know you guys try to make a sort of a a uh, very broad view of things having to do with science as well as you know popular culture those types of things so so i think you have mm -hmm. a you have a well-rounded uh, view of of the world so so i can appreciate yeah, and it, it. Hey, and, ron, and ron it actually answers a lot of childhood questions for a lot of people man i know for me like I, like i said probably plenty of shows before like you know i had those questions as a kid yo like how the hell did we get here <laughs> i'm out of another yeah. curse but I was like, you know, yeah, like, wh how, where, where I come from? You know, they say God. They go, well, where did God come from? Just, but the answers never really added up, made sense. Right. You know what I mean? But I know that there were some kids that grew up that might have been uh, in a situation where they actually had scientists they could ask that question to that gave them real down to earth answers um, back with evidence so they could understand the world of, around them a little bit better. Yeah. Yep. You know what I mean? So that's what, that's what I like about our shows, man. It's, it's, it's helping some kids out there, man. I guarantee it. Yeah, I mean... And, helping teenagers, and, adults that, that just yeah. had these questions for years, like, you know, what, what's the black hole? and uh, yeah. What happened with the Big Bang? What's that about? You know what I mean? Uh, it certainly points, uh, you, what, at, points people you know, in the right... It points people in a direction that says, okay, yeah. don't, here's what I'm telling you guys. I think this is what you guys do very well. You say, okay, here's what, here's what the experts say. Mm -hmm. And right, but, right. but don't but don't don't trust me with that. Go back and go go and take a look for yourself. Go dig for yourself. So hey, look, and, it, and if you think about it, yo, hey, the pseudos do that too, though. Remember, York used to be on some jump. Don't trust me. Go look it up. Mm -hmm. You know, but that used to be his kind of like way to <laughs> way to kind of get you to kind of believe him a little bit because you go you like, well, damn, that nigga said look it up, so he can't be lying. Yeah, you know what I mean, <laughs> no, he understood. So you, really, you could find that thing. My fault. He understands. Hey. You could find what he was saying. Uh-uh, you ain't gonna just jump out there. I thought I'm, I apologize for no, that. No, I'm not. Hey, look, like you've been, you been in, the, in the drone, you know, you know what, he did, what he used to do? <laughs> yeah, my, my fault. But that's, <laughs> not, you, good, that's the trick. That's the trick. So you can find you can you, you can find anything that, that will help you in your confirmation bias. Mm. Mm. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's yeah, easy. Yeah. You can find about the Anunnaki, right? If you keep looking up, you have a 
Okay, evolution, whatever. But the album. Uh-uh, don't do that. that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that, but that yeah, actually, yeah. that's actually a good point. Uh, oh, we here, Ken. Oh, we here. Yeah, let's here. Go. You just chase me over here. That's uh, a good example. We here. I know everybody's over here. Hey, look. Hey, look. Hey, look. What? That's a good point you made though, because <laughs> he did say go look it up, and you can't find that particular information if your brain has already got the confirmation bias. If you ain't got, the, you ain't Jesus got the two. Damn. But let, but for a minute, let's go ahead. Uh, go ahead, introduce yourself, Bobby Benga. Highlight like the people real quick, officially. What's going on with the pseudo killers, man? Pseudo killers on deck, man. I see Sosa. I see him. I see you, Kent. Chill, what what's up, do? man? And you, the lovely Juju. That's and Ron, brother Ron, so- brother Ron, oh. and then that damn thunder <laughs> following me all the rest. Of- <laughs> <laughs> we on golf. You say, "Are we going over here now?" How you beat me here, yo? I beat you here. That's funny. But go ahead, introduce yourself real quick, Thunder. What's up, uh, everybody, man? Uh, I love every last one of you all, man. I, if I ain't never told you that, I'm gonna tell you now. You all are some loved individuals, period. And you ain't gonna stop me from doing it. But we gonna bang out on evolution. We bang. <laughs> oh, we hey, bang man, I was just about to. I was just but let me ask hey, you this look, question though. If we kind of, if we kind of towards the, the brain, if we can talk about it through, through, through no, like no, the no, brain. no, no, I'm gonna be in and out. But Juju, let me ask you this: Did y'all, did y'all, and I, I ain't telling y'all how to run your show, but I okay. do know y'all, y'all do cover, uh, space, right? So we know we got SpaceX doing this thing mm-hmm. yesterday. Uh, I don't know if you all covered that or will cover it or don't have a desire to cover it but i'm saying that i think it'll be pretty cool for y'all to present that so, uh, that aspect as well if you're not yeah it's a lot of stuff going on actually and i live in florida so there's constantly launches going on with different stuff you feel me like i don't think people realize how much that they're they're having these type of um launches right because hi amir happy amir <laughs> Who's from your unknown Auntie Juju? <laughs> but uh, I just happy want to tell you happy birthday, here. Happy birthday, birthday man. man! Yeah, that's your twin, Garfield. Happy birthday, but, man! Happy so birthday! So what, what we do do on the shows with our galaxy and beyond is a lot of times, if we're not covering certain things, I, I think that should be okay. Because um, we are dealing with a certain instrumental tool. Not to say that we don't deal with any others, but we do have a, a line of. Uh, discourse when it comes to the show but we provide so many resources like I have given people links for about everything to a uh, SpaceX to the European Space Station and all that so you know in your free time with your children you can be participating in that like you know when the launches are going off so you can go out with your children and see a launch you know in real time and things like that so um, I think we give the tools for people to engage in that whether we discuss it or not, but you know, yeah, it's a lot of things. So, I mean, that's just where, because it, it's a lot of stuff. It's a lot of stuff going on. So sometimes it's hard to discuss everything. And, and some of our points is just to give people the basics so they'll have a better understanding of astronomy. You feel me? Like astronomy one-on-one from, from, from novice and enthusiast, but still, and, and then we've ha- had, had expert interviews already. That was some of our, um, you know, yeah. First for the year expert interviews with two astrophysicists that didn't get a lot of numbers, but they spoke on some real awesome stuff. Oh, yeah, they done with deep relationships. Yeah. So we, we've already done that work. Um, but I'll I'll land there. But but yeah, I mean, you know, thank you. And I'll probably mention on the show if you want me to. I, I take requests. This is the request line. <laughs> oh, I, no. I, I'm, in, I'm in Florida right now, um, Juju. I got a personal request. You got a request? You can pick me up from the airport. Oh, man. Okay. For real? <laughs> man, I'll come get you, man. Hey, you take hey, hey, you say you take down down the airport. Hey, is it Miami? Is it's Miami. Nah. <laughs> request. In Jacksonville, Orlando. I can help you out. You know what I mean? You were extremely vague with that comment. When you say yeah. I take requests, you got to be specific. Oh, God. Yeah, you yeah. You got well, crazy you know, dudes like golf. You know, I'm Jamaican. My mind is wild. <laughs> I take it all over the place. <laughs> well, go ahead and introduce to yourself to the people, Garfield, real quick. And then uh, Willie Daniels, thank you for hitting the panel. You know, shout out to the people real quick before y'all go. Yeah, peace and love. This brother Garfield, Dagger Squad CEO for life. 
Yeah. And um, I'm going to start doing some shows on the Dagger Squad YouTube too, man. So I could bang. I'm a ba That's going to be my banging channel. Okay, so okay. I'm going to bang on <laughs> Willie Daniels first. I got to bang on him first. Okay, that's what <laughs> we do. Got to bang on him first. He's the Abo stomper, but I'm the Willie Daniels stomper. How about that? Boy, that's funny. <laughs> no, I'm good. I'm good, man. Well, peace and love, man. Uh, I'm going to check out the show. I got I to gotta help Amir with his homework. That's, that's all right. Get it. that homework. Peace, peace. Yeah, appreciate you for sliding through Garfield, man. Yeah, Bring I definitely appreciate, do, man. We appreciate that love. That's how we do, man. We ready, you know, turn it up a little bit on this joint, man. We all that, man. How many <laughs> people we got? Is there a specific huh? topic today? Is there a specific yeah, about topic? Yeah, nah. we were we were doing uh we call the interactive brain show just going over some of the source materials we use for the brain conversation and to see where people were on that whether they dealt with the show or not if they had their own ideas experiences or or, or just something to share concerning brain brain development and some things that you know we can do to kind of combat some of the generational curses and uh how we can affect people you know because we, we've learned a lot Hey, let me ask you a question as a woman, Juju. The other, uh -oh. Yesterday, right, uh -oh. I had my, um, my son's mother, right? And I said, mm -hmm. good job. She said, why are you telling me good job? She, one of the things years ago when we was married, she hate when I gave her a compliment. She's like, I'm supposed to do this. You are. You know, because she did the whole setup. You know, as men, we don't say, here, here's the money. Do right. whatever you got to do. And she's like, why are you telling me good job? I, I always do this. Like, what's the <laughs> She felt kind of. What do you, What do you think about that? Men so, shouldn't come to that woman and say, no, hey, you know, nice "Men should and women should do the <laughs> same." I think it should be both ways. We should compliment each other. Those are like words of affirmation. You feel me? Um, yeah, but, to the body budget. Is that it, a more Moata Ashby moment? You're talking about words of affirmation? No, uh, no, no. I'm more okay. talking about when. Okay, so they have this thing talking about uh, what is your love language? Mm -hmm. Y'all heard of that? Yes, so, I have. Okay, so maybe I mean I think that's a fun thing for couples to do. I, I've tried to do it with my love interest. Like that'd be like on like you know the second third date type thing. But I think anybody can do it in any type of relationship. You feel me? Especially if that's the mother of your child. But um, love language is it's it's fun. It's like a questionnaire, so you can gauge on what are those things that you read as someone loves you. You feel me? And I feel mm. like the more the better you know a person, the better you can be and do by that person right so and i always ask the people that i have love interests like you know like what's your love language or what are those things i i, I might not say like that but i definitely will ask them well like, what are those things that make you feel wanted and loved by a woman you feel me um and i just think that has to do with you know that, that has to do with a little bit of our childhood traumas for whatever reason i think black people as a whole are kind of like oh we're supposed to do that i don't need nothing like but yes we do we actually do. I think everybody wants to be like congratulated or at least giving some type of, you know, positive reinforcement for it is hard work to raise a child. So mm. let's not, you know, act like it's not. So, and, and everybody can't, can't, everybody may not be doing it right or up to par. And, and some people may not be even realizing how much they are doing that you may not see in other mothers. So yeah, just get still, still give it a compliment, whether she, you know, receives it or not, you're doing your part. Still do that. And I think, you know, maybe subconsciously it's being received. Whether she pushes back or not, that's just her being humble. You feel me? But mm -hmm. we should compliment each and every last one of us, men and women alike, all the time. And it doesn't have to be romantic either, right? And by the way, um, happy Mother's History Month. Woman. Woman's History Month, I mean. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Miss Tiffany. Miss Tiffany, I think I'm gonna replay that interview we did, man. I gotta play that. People, Ooh, people yeah. I'm gonna replay. You ain't lying. Every chance Black we get sick, here goes this. Here goes, here goes, goes the thirsty nigga moment. Here goes the thirsty nigga moment. Here it is. Here it is. You can look at Miss Tiffany. Let's take it. Please, Miss Tiffany, y'all, you gonna get shot, man. You know what's funny though? You know what's funny though? You know what's funny? You know what's funny? This is pseudo killers, right? Mm -hmm. And the woman, the woman's beauty is based off of her fucking intelligence. <laughs> it ain't based off the way your perceived vision of how they look. It's actually based off of how you formulate <laughs> your sentences, how you formulate your opinion, how you can back that up by scientific data. That's the only reason Miss Tiff and Juju and Mohead and Miss Bennett and all the other women. They ain't we, we ain't judging them on if they find this because that's like that's no, a, that's subjective. Yeah, you could be fine and crazy now. 
Yeah, you can be <laughs> and be targeted. <laughs> we seen it. You can be oh, fine and out of your damn back mind, like, rabbit straight in that game, crazy, running for public office for you. Boy, that's why I have you, you though, in jail. Uh, so don't cut me off. My mind is that where the cops going. Let me jump off you. With evolution, I listen to you, Garfield. I appreciate it. Hey, God, we appreciate that, yo. How many people we got in the building? We got to get this. Just real quick question. Oh man, hey, we have about two hundred. We have about two hundred. We have about two hundred. Can we let um, Willie Daniels get it? You know, introduce himself oh, to the people. Peace, Willie. Thank you for hitting the panel, what fam. What time is it? What you up, on Willie? mute, Willie. We can't what hear up, you. Will? Can't hear you. you on mute, Willie. You gotta go in and uh, go out and come back in. I said this. Five. Oh. No, we can't hear him. No, he was off of mute. So why well, we got thirty-seven people in this joint? Because uh, it dropped. Our- hey, look, it dropped when y'all came. We had about a hundred. Uh, yeah. you know, that's funny. Funny. Hey, about 15. Like, oh, that hell funny. No. Hey, about 15. Yeah, I mean, if y'all, ain't, if y'all ain't talking about that um BE conversation, then you already know what it is when it's the stuff that we need. Nah, you're supposed to be. It's really the interactive brain show. What's the issue? What's um, the nobody uh, and talk about it from a brain perspective, yo. Make people hit the hit the link, like, you know, yeah, yo. So, what's going on, Willie? What would that do? What's going on, brother? Uncle there you go. On the How you doing, man? I had a phone call. That's why I was messing up. Oh, yeah, brother. yeah. It'll do that. They just, they just kept calling, so that's why I was acting up. <laughs> so, so let me introduce myself. My name is Willie Daniels. I'm you know, I'm here for information. I'm here to Absolutely. also challenge information that I don't agree with. Um, that's it. Mm-hmm. I don't, <laughs> I don't have that on my resume. What's your first question, Willie? Let's see if you can get it right. What's your first it ain't no right or wrong. My first question. Yeah, what you got? What's my first question? Because I know I don't care. I know how you <laughs> Okay, here go, here go my first question. It's directly to you, um. Mm-hmm. Uh-oh. Why can't Egypt be black? Oh, no, uh, no, yeah. no. Yeah, yeah I can't. Pause. It can be whatever you want it to be, yo, Willie. Pause. Pause. No, no, I'm saying, come on, Juju. Let me give him his answer. Pause. You can oh, you kicked him off. Come on, Juju. Just just I'm just kidding. Let me. You want to drive? I'm nope. just kidding. No, 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 no. We're not doing that. It can be whatever you want it to be, Willie. That's in your mind, right? Now, from a scientific <laughs> perspective, you know what I'm saying? That's the racism that put 12 million people in, in slavery, yo. That's why. That's my answer. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Gotta re- That's real. You blacked out, Willie. And we can't hear you. His phone will probably right again. Yeah, his phone messing mm-hmm. up. Mm-hmm. What up, Sabio? There's gotta be some psychological reasons that we could talk. Yeah, about. let me uh what's up, Sabio? Let me finish uh Ron's question. I will. Right can, can can we let the people on the stage though? Go ahead. Get it stable and I'll get back to it. Um what up, Sabio? Welcome to the you panel. Wild ass truck, yo. You be hitting the <laughs> <laughs> God, this motherfucker. Can you uh Jeez. <laughs> no, put people out and let them in. Put them yeah, in. Take <laughs> you off the stage in a minute. Knocking people off the motherfucker. We got to get you off the stage. Actually, he left. I haven't kicked anybody off the stage, Bobby. Yeah. Stop disrupting my show, please. Right, because you stumped them on the easy. You could have. You could have. I'm saying. Let me just oh, say this real boy. fast, though, yo. All, right. All the goddamn information we got, yo. There has to be a psychological brain reason, right? Why people cling like this to that in the face of evidence? What is that? You know what I'm saying? What is that? Mark has got a whole chart of behaviors based off the brain. Matter of fact, the picture look like a damn brain with different characteristics. Yo, what characteristics are being brought out in these conversations, man? Right? That's what I'm that that's what the people really want to know. Or at least I want to know why is it? Right? When one person says something, clear as day. We think it to be clear, right? We thinking that we understand, like what Carl Cooney said, we thought we understood, right? And then other people played the video and they thought they understood. And those people say, but why y'all ain't why y'all ain't hollering, screaming at her like that? Because we mm. thought we understood what she was saying. We agreed with her. There was no need to push back. So what is that? What what is that? What is that going through our heads? Can somebody help answer that question for me? Marcus, Juju, 
Kent, y'all that was really into the thing, explain that, yo. What's I, going on, yo? I think there's a lot of cognitive bias going on. Um, it's, it's feel good information. Uh, uh, Dunning Kruger, I think Marcus was building on the Dunning Kruger effect earlier, which I'm about to get into in that next book. Y'all about to read uh, the, the the expertise book. Um, it's a, it's a bunch of things at play though. It's like it, man, I'm thinking things from even back when 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 people was kids um the tools that they were given as, as children and how they were treated as children that start to you know play out as adults as well so i mean i don't think you can pinpoint it to just one thing i think it's a lot of shit, a lot of shit going on man mm. how about you marcus well in, in some cases it's tied to um, the social construct of identity, right? So how we identify ourselves and what we associate ourselves with. Uh-huh. That that begins to change some of the, the conversation, right? It's harder for people to accept information when it's personally um, when, it, when it's personally evolving who they think they are, right? And so that always makes it much uh-huh. more difficult. And, and you can find it a prime example is Trump supporters, right? They got these, they're made to be funny and mock them, but you have to really listen to them from a point of how psychology, evolutionary, sociology, and psychology and neurology would would probably view such behaviors, right? Because they wouldn't view it mm-hmm. necessarily the same way, right? And they would ask some questions, say, uh, one example was they did it with Joe Biden, right? And they said, Joe Biden, um, it was found out that Joe Biden had an affair with a stripper and he paid her um, to keep quiet. And they would, you could see the visceral, the anger and frustration in him. And then they would say to him, Oh, I'm sorry, that was Donald Trump. And immediately you would see how their facial expressions and body language would change. And, and when they say that, is, that's exactly what we're talking about. They, they identify themselves with, with Donald Trump. And so, their their behavior patterns change based on how they feel it, and this is the core essence of cognitive bias, right? So that's mm. that's what that is. It's a it's the fundamental part of co- cognitive bias. They did a study. They did a study. They asked uh, analysts, data analysts, to study newspaper articles uh, for or against whatever their perspective was, and uh, they were. It was much harder from the find the logical data errors when it when it went for their perspective versus for when they went against it. So that's another point to it. And the worst aspect of that is politics and self-identity. So mm. that's hey, it. Hey, uh, mm-hmm. No, but I don't know if you finished, Mark. Go ahead, uh, Mark. No, I, I'm, I'm done. Hey, so like even when it comes to Christians, right, you know how God can't lose? Mm-hmm. It's like if, if – uh, you know, somebody's dying, you know, we praying in the church, you know, hey, you know, we pray that your sister get through and God going to work it out for her and he's a, he's a uh, on time God and all that, right? And everybody <laughs> cheering and, and if she pulled through, then look at God, right? But if the sister die and it's, oh, you know, God was ready to take her home because it was the time and he ain't never, it's like, it's like they're gonna they're gonna make it like how um Marcus said about the Trump supporters and when they found out it was Biden oh they 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 learned about what Biden said but it was really Trump that said it mm-hmm. and they just found an excuse why they still support Trump. It works. It, I don't know. It's the same thing with religion too, or with whatever identity, <coughs> whatever cultural identity that you align with. Hey, uh, <clears throat> can I ask a question? I, I think uh, Marcus and Kent, you guys both make make good points. But I can I can really understand why why black people in this country or African Americans in this country take a, a hard stance, a hard stance towards black culture, black civilizations, black whatever. Mm-hmm. But the question, I think a better question though is when I talk to you guys, you guys are actually on the on the other side of the of the of the fence. Mm-hmm. And the question I have for you is being, oh, being what fence is that though? Well, well you, you say that it, that they're uh, indigenous African. You don't you don't push it beyond that. You don't say that they're black. And so, right, right, right. So, so the question. But I say African Americans are black, though, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm black well, and I'm proud. But as an African, as an African, as a black African American, why do you not? How are you able to not push it? 
push that towards the uh, towards the African or, or be more strongly towards. What is that? No. Okay, it's got somebody somebody playing. I miss somebody. somebody. Somebody's got something going on. It's, uh, That's my bad. My bad. I forgot to hit the mute. My bad. Okay. No problem. So, so the question I have for you guys is, mm. why do you, how are you not able to to be more strongly bent towards Black uh, Egypt or Black Africa? I mean, what? How are you able to to divorce yourself from that notion? Because it's a because, false. Because, because because really, you you. I think I think I think really, you would be in the minority. Nah, uh, uh so you say science is in a minority, right? No, I'm saying I'm saying the way that that thought, that thinking, is in the minority within the black within the black uh, population. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think that's a minority period because it's scientific and and it takes study to even get to that. No, right? no, no. Like, I, like I, you would have to know that it was racist. Like I'm trying it, to. I mean, I showed the Jim Crow laws, yo. Like, yeah. So I'm an advocate for fighting against racism, white supremacy. And it was Charles Darwin theory that actually put the hammer on it. Mm -hmm. Now it didn't change people's minds, but what it did was it gave us a a a a a, a snapshot. It gave us data. It gave us things we could study and look at and organize it and have a real conversation. Right before then, anything went the five races: Mongoloid, Caucasoid, Oceania, Negroid. You know what I'm saying? All that was in the game. But but don't you think that that so that was hold that on, we all understand that we all can understand that all understand that I guess not because we still <laughs> stand it. so that means you don't understand it right you know what I'm saying and 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 science is slow so they still trying to remove, hold on they still trying to remove those terms though brother so if I say that I'm black and I'm proud that should absolutely tell you that I'm not denying our blackness. I'm just saying it's not a scientific concept. Race is not. And, <laughs> and, and that's something I reserve for my politics. Mm -hmm. It's not something I have in my scientific conversations. That's all. But, that's all, but, right? uh, but, but scientifically, I think what, what Marcus said makes, makes a whole lot of sense. It makes a whole lot of well, sense. I must have missed it. I must have missed what Marcus said. What did Marcus say against what I'm just Ma saying? Did he? Marcus, is Marcus still there? Yes. Yeah. So Marcus uh, basically is saying that we are, you know, we are governed by um, uh, no, no tribalism. We we uh, uh, we have yeah. identity politics. We identify okay. with with certain things, certain groups. How does that get? How does that throw me off? How does that put me? Because you, because you you are you're not pushing towards because you yeah yeah you're black you're 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 a black man. Yeah, I'm a black say, man. But you say I draw the at, at the shores of the Atlantic and the Pacific, I draw I draw the line right there. You don't go beyond that. No, 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 no. No, that's not real. I'm saying I draw the line of colonialism. Yeah, yeah, I understand, but yeah, when they introduced it, I want the I, I want the real education behind it. <laughs> right? I, I guess it's what I'm not saying a is black, then why would say I like to know the education behind that? Yeah, right? but but I think I think we we um we don't so always talk about white? Are the Egyptians terms. white? Excuse me. Are the Egyptians white? No, that's 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 the discussion. No, we don't we don't believe they're white, right? Why not? Because if they black, they can surely be white. I mean, I don't want I don't want to get into this. this we're talking about. We're no, I'm making a point here. Why, why can't we why celebrate? Why can't they away? celebrate the whiteness? I, I don't. I think I think you're you're. No, they got people off, in Egypt with blue topic. eyes. No, no, they get got people in Egypt with blue eyes. It's actually light skin. I know, but you're getting off topic. The topic, being is, white. The topic is, is about topic, identification. The, the topic was about identification. So I'm, I'm trying that? to show you why, why, why you people... ask the question on why I don't do it. Because then you open up the you open up the floodgates, right? Where you get people say they got Indo-European DNA, um, thus they're white. I, I understand, but those right? those discussions those discussions have taken place, and I don't want. No, I, they I have not. Have no, discussion. they're still around. No, <laughs> bro. They're still around right now. They've taken that. Indo European, hold on, you have Indo European DNA in Egyptians, yo. And, they, and it's clear. been in there. No, it's been in there for 20,000 years before it even was a place called Egypt. How do wow. you reconcile that then? If they're saying that they're white people, right? Then, then Egyptians got white people DNA. Jabari says it. Jabari says that the quote unquote Libyans are Europeans. 
because Diop said it. Yeah. Nobody calls that man on that. The, the, the Libyans are in Egypt, and there was a Libyan dynasty. No one We're says talking about the minutia. We're talking about the minutia. We're talking about the minutia. It's, the minutia. Minutia. it's the... only minutia when I bring it up, though, bro. No, 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 no. I'm talking Think about, about identif identification. I'm well, you can only the, talk the about the black identification, right, if there's a white identification, because that was the only reason why I was that. No, 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 no. You can't we, take away this, the white and still talk you're, about black. You're making, this, you're making this conversation a little bit more convoluted than what, than what convoluted? I think, I think, yeah, yeah, the way, the way it started, it started was, black. Your, your question, your question was about why, what is it mentally about, about people like me and, and Smash and name them, Reggie, whoever. While we identify or identify strongly with black with a black Egypt, uh, in in face of as you as you would say scientific the, information, the, the science and the consensus. So I'm I'm asking you. 1974, the why, conference of the apps was at. I mean, don't forget all you that. Have to, you have to let me finish. You have to let me finish so I can so I can kind of frame this in the in the way I think it we started it. And so uh, so Marcus gave a good answer as to why that would why that could be. So then I asked the question, well, what about the other side? Why, if you are a black man, we're black people, why aren't we, um, what, how are we able to, to uh, disassociate from that then? How, how are we able to, how are you able to disassociate from that? Because I don't, because, I, the rest I, of the I, because I can read and write and I can count and I understand chronology. So I don't have to disassociate myself but, with it. But, I just but all of us, read all of us can act like I can read. I know, but you're 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 assuming that the rest of us can't do those things. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, obviously can't do it. <laughs> but you know that's not you're true. not comprehending. No, no, bro, you're a high level thinker, yo. Until it comes to this, there's a mental block to dive in on you. But you that's, really what was, that's, 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 that's what Marcus was. That's what trying to answer. Yeah. And now we're getting somewhere. That's what Marcus yeah, was trying to answer. Yeah, I'm, yeah. Trying, I'm trying to say. I'm Pick up to the brass. Yeah. Why? Why aren't you? Why? Why does that not work for you or or for Marcus or for Kent? Or for Juju, uh, or for the rest of the, the PKs, why does not work for you? I mean, if you call you yourself a black American, you well, you let me it strongly. All right, All let right, me let's um, let me give you some some okay. some ideas into that. It, it it may be a subject in which we um aren't as di uh, invested in at this present time, but there could always be other subjects in which your cognitive biases can um, come into play. So um, in, in my case, we was doing the brain show and there was a section that had to do with your brain being a prediction, right? And at the time there was an incident in Philadelphia in which a cop had just shot an individual in the car and his partner had yelled out gun and the other cop, who's uh, pretty new, ended up shooting into the car, killing the man. And that was, in, in a sense, that, that brought about this cognitive bias, right? And it brought to a point in me, personally, in which I had to, to evaluate, will I stand with science or will I take my personal visceral against police um, and just ignore what the, the actual evidence is? And, and the evidence is, is that that it shows that um, the way you're brought up, the way you're raised, um, propaganda, and how you view people uh, creates the predictive model in your brain. And therefore, I'm not going to say people aren't culpable, but in a sense, I can now understand how in heightened, heightened environments, people will more than likely make mistakes. Um what that what that means today and the consequences i'm not sure but that's one of the areas in which my own personal cognitive bias played a part in how i had to evaluate that and and to this day i still struggle with that the fact that i, I looked at it as a black male in america as this is solely racism and cops hate black people and I held that view for a very, very long time. And looking at uh, Lisa Barrett's book, um, she brought that to the forefront and saying, wait a minute, you know, what, 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 what is actually going on in the brain and the behavior? Um, 
I want to read a quote. I'm going to end up going to get this quote from Ralph Ellison. It's a quote that um, kind of summarizes how historically black people have been viewed. And then I have to take that into consideration that the the brain takes that same historical presence and creates a predictive model on what the world may be like. You, you're making some good. You're making some really good points, but the only question, and I'll, I know you're going to read from uh, from uh, Ralph Ellison, but but real quick, so you're telling me that by reading a book and synthesizing what's in that book was enough for you to say that you know this is the way it is. Like uh, you know, I shouldn't be as I, I shouldn't have this cognizant bias against police. No, no, no. no. I, no, I'm, I'm telling that. you, I'm, I'm, I'm giving you where where someone may be having cognitive bias about black um, black Egypt. Mine had to do with police, and I still struggle with it. I didn't say that I, I I'm in wholehearted agreement with her. I'm telling you that I recognize that this may be a bias of mine towards police officers. I mean, that's I'm telling you what it is. Now, each person may have their own areas in which their cognitive biases um, may play a role in it. And, and that e that includes even the scientists themselves, which is why they're trained how to try to avoid this. This uh, He talked about the pinwheel of biases that they, they currently know exists within the realm of human nature and behavior. So, um, Butu, he said something. Um, that the cops, you're trained as a cop not to react emotionally. And he is correct, except for um, that training. There, there is examples like um, they had one in Florida. They had one in Georgia in which they took mug shots of black people and used it for target practice. So that also becomes part of the predicting model. And training can only go but so far when we're talking about systemic racism and how effective it is in the propaganda. I could give you a prime example. It's actually one of the sources that we use for today's show. Um, most people would think that crime is prevalent and that it's increasing, but the truth of the matter is it's been on a steady decline since the 90s. But what has changed is the amount of information you receive about crime. And so you perceive that crime is getting out of hand and it's running rampant when that, in all actuality, uh, Violent crimes and crimes against property actually have been on a pretty steady de decline since the early 90s. That's an example of what I'm talking about. And so if you have places like New York who overreport in the news and stuff like that of black people committing crimes, that creates a brain that predicts black people as dangerous. It was propaganda in the 1916s to the 1919s called the Red Summers which led to the destruction of numerous black towns. It's well documented that that propaganda uh, prone people to respond in visceral and violence against black progress and any incident in which involved black men. And so that's just a scientific fact. We don't have to debate that. Thank you. No, yeah, I appreciate your answer. I think it was a good answer and uh, I, I understand it. Um, I'm just trying to now understand, based on your answer, why is it that that the that the pseudo killers um, can disassociate themselves from from having a a strong predilection towards a black Egypt versus uh, versus what I consider to be the majority would be the majority uh, view within black uh, black black population. Based again, based on what Marcus just said about about how we identify and how we how we have this uh this uh cognizant uh bias as he put it well why do you guys not have that bias because we try to stand as best as we can to the experts mm -hmm. and so we use their training and their experiential knowledge and what they've learned to, as guideposts so that we are aware of these same biases Mm -hmm. And and it's easy for humans to draw nigh and hold to a position and not be able to adjust. But my my thing is, if, if the science comes in 
and says, you know, that Egypt was black, I am wholeheartedly willing to accept that. Everyone's not willing to do that. That's a minority cuss. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that could be based on our personal experience, our genetic envi and, and environment blending together in which uh, some of us have recognized that the best method today for progress is science. And so we'll just stand on that. Mm -hmm. But but would you say though that from uh, from an evolutionary perspective, uh, leaning more black people leaning more towards a black Egypt or pulling more toward for a black Egypt makes sense evolutionary from an evolutionary perspective? No, absolutely not. Right. Um, um, mainly because um, the the concept of race really had nothing to do with evolution, and so. Um, that we're very clear that um, there's only one homo sapien left on the planet Earth. And through environmental mechanisms and evolution, there are certain surface level, level phenotypes um, that have evolved. But in essence, we're all one animal class and that's all we are left is the only homo sapiens left um so in all honesty when we use black um we are using in essence a social political um term that is relatively new in 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 evolutionary history mm -hmm. um, it's it's relatively new so no i wouldn't say that that is now what would be is things like the us and them, which in that evolutionary process, you can see how that point came to be, but that point in and of itself is not based on evolution. Well, I, I think that's what I was getting at, the us and them, that's 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 evolution, right? I mean, n n nobody says that, nobody says that when, you, when we talk about Egypt, that- I, I'm just, gonna jump in, just, I, I can't, <laughs> I'm not gonna do it, sorry. Yeah. I'm gonna be rude now. Um, but yeah, Sabio and Gideon is on the panel. So would y'all like to, you know, Sabio, then Gideon, and we can move the conversation forward? Yeah, because... Off of Black Egypt, this, back onto the brain show? Yeah, because that's what I actually joined the show for, the brain show. And yeah, so I'm go understanding ahead, go ahead everybody. Brain show. I'm understanding every... I'm even starting to better understand Ankh's name aspect of why, of why they're saying that they're indigenous Africans and but you also have to understand the literature and the lack of literature and all we have to go by from Egypt is the metal netter and once you start understanding that and then you start recognizing that it's other people coming into Egypt and observing Egypt from the outside describing these people and telling you what these people are, the conversation will slow down. That's why the literature is vital. The literature is vital and y'all will continue to make these mistakes. Did you have anything to say? And I'm not, and I'm not talking about Aunt Lim and 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 everybody else, I'm putting this. I'm putting this presentation together. It's not easy. It's a lot of shit that I have to show. So, do you have anything to say about the brain show? Yeah, because if that's what okay, we're talking we talking about, on that? yeah, no. um, I, I said say something about the brain show. I'm oh, going. my fault. My fault. That's what my I said fault. when I, I let you speak. I apologize. Well, first thing like I want to add right now, the first <laughs> the interactive thing, the first brain show. I don't care first, what anybody else saying. Let's get on the first. The first. My, I, I apologize. About West man. Africa. If you want to talk about anything Africa? It's got to be West Africa. On my time. All right. I, I apologize about for that. Um. So the first thing I want to know is: Have we set? Have we made sure that the brain and the mind is one entity? They're two separate entities in the same place. That's the quick the consensus on that. Hmm? What do you mean? Oh. 
the mind is the the brain and the mind are not necessarily the same thing, but they happen in the same place. That's what I mean. The mind is nothing but chemical processes. From what I'm aware of, when I read psychology I'm just telling what the books, literature says. This, like, I'm not making this up in my head. But if Marcus I'm wants to want, want, want to answer on that or Kent, by all means, you, you asked the question. So. Okay, so. I need to know. Um, yeah, I was, look, I'm about to grab something to eat, but look, the, the mind is, is abstract, uh, Sabio. So it's just a, it's just a way to explain it, it's the chemical, uh, the processes that happen in our brain is thank you. pretty much what they describe them. I agree. I totally. Uh, that's all. I'm, thank you. Do you, you, totally you, yes. you, you, you hear what he said? Yes. The mind is abstract. I, but, but, the mind wait, is a wait, way to explain wait, I don't the think, chemical processes in the brain. Okay. God, is everybody on a thousand? So I don't think he. You let him finish before you start saying thank you. Cut him off so the rest of the audience can hear what he was saying. Because I think that was important. So can you repeat that, Ken, if you don't mind? Yeah, I was saying that the mind is 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 just an explanation of all of the, the, the things that's happening in our brain. It's not the brain. It's an abstract uh, idea to, to explain the brain, or explain what's, what we're experiencing in the brain. The chemical that makes process. Sense. The chemical processes, right? Mm-hmm. But I could be wrong. I mean, we can we can look into it and go further. But as far as I understand it, it's it's an abstract thing. So we so I'm all I'm trying to do is demystify the brain, take the spookiness away from the mind, and make sure we know that all this is is chemical reactions that are taking process. So when we dream. It's yeah, you're not chemical. separate. You're not separate from the body. You're not. Yeah. Yeah. So that's yeah. what I'm trying to. Yeah. You know. You're not. Yeah. You're it's not, not some kind. You're not, yeah. You're not somewhere invisible, and when you die, your mind is going somewhere else, and not like that. No, you're. You. you all you are, are is the brain. Everything that you Bingo. experience happens in the brain. Is that what you was you were trying to figure out? We can ha we can have all the discussions we want to because now I when we I, I, when I talk about the mind I, it's philosophy I put it in the philosophy because then you can bring in the spirit the soul and all those philosophical ideas that is attached to it now if you want to go down that route but I keep it on chemical processes strictly because I recognize through my studying that it that's what it is. I've read three, I went to I went to psychology class, I've studied it intensely and I couldn't find anything outside of those books telling me the mind was separate from the brain. Like so it's all philosophy when you talk about it in that word. Yeah, it's not it's not a physical like the mind isn't a physical thing you can touch. It's just it's just that it's, it's explaining right. those, you know what I'm saying? Right. But you don't you don't have a mind, you don't have those those um you don't have those things happening without a brain. You right. can't even explain a mind without the brain. Right. But it's not nothing. Not, ain't nothing spooky, though. Right. That's all I'm saying. That's all I've been really saying for a long time about that, because it's been a very difficult idea or conversation, because there's some attachment to the psyche or the soul due to the Greek word psyche being attached to it. And that were being attached to psychology. And people say, like say that so, again. I didn't quite get that. Say that again. So it's been difficult to have these conversations because people will attempt to attach the word psyche to the word mind. And because the Greek word psyche was used to 
to to create the field of psychology, they somehow equate that to the soul, and they make that some type of they they somehow e separate the mind from the soul, and it gets very convoluted when they bring up those when they well, bring when, that I up. I mean, when they when they first started talking about yeah, it, you know. They they were talking about the soul. So when I understand Socrates, when Socrates made his whole allegory conversation about the sight of human and human will, he he specifically was talking about um, a soul. But I understand your point in in that um, science has now detached from that overall theme that that uh that have been predicated before and have long right. been on it. So I, I understand your point. I just want to add that point for clarification. Yeah, I understood. And 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 that that be the that be the difficulty in these conversations because when we talk about the science, we have to understand that at that time they could only explain certain process, certain things off of what they was exposed to. So they weren't able to study these chemical processes and then put explanations to them. I, I don't I don't even know if they would be even if that's classified technically as science in and of itself. I think what we have is the rudimentary points that will develop in the science, if, if you can get my point. Um, I think they did have, well, we know that there's certain experiments that were done prior to them um, globally, not just in, in Greek philosophy. Uh, but I think the natural philosophy bred science and then came a structure to it known as a scientific uh, method, uh, methodological naturalism versus philosophical naturalism. Right. And that's where a lot of these ideas came from. So I want to, after you finish, I would like to clarify my point on the brain and the mind because I don't understand how you think we're disagreeing, but I think we need to make some things clear. So I think we, well, hold on. I got a, I got a, um, a good chat GPT. I just looked up. I, 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 can I finish my point, please? Can I, please? So, the mind and the brain are not the same. That's what I said. They are located in the same place. And when I said it earlier, I'm telling you by what we've read. That's what they're talking about. We, I'm not gonna make it up. Um, so your brain has to do with uh, the, the physicality. You know, it's going to process the information. It's going to control your body functions. Your mind, we are Muntu, but it, it seems like as if, you know, one of us is saying wrong, but your mind has to do with that psychological subjective experience, whether, you know, uh, of the brain, you know, so everybody's mind is not exactly the same. Um, and it's very subjective. Okay, um, but can't you can go ahead and read uh, what you have? So that's why I was explaining. Like they're in the same place. Yes, um, you can't have a mind without the brain, but they're technically not the same thing. And if you want to, you can boil it down to just chemical processes. But it has a little bit more to do with that. And we've discussed this in the show when we talked about how culture, our environment, and our own personal experiences can affect you know, our, our mind, like they shape our mind. Everyone has a different, you know, uh, a mind, so to speak, because of how your brain was developed. So that that's a long to get more clarity. All right, everybody got different experiences. Exactly. But go ahead, Kent. I know you had the chat GBT. That, that's what I did. But if you want to read it in its entirety or expound on that. I guess not. Um, Gideon, I know you've been waiting for a long time. Did you want to say anything? Yeah, y'all can hear me? Oh, no, we couldn't hear you. Oh, damn, my bad. Yeah, I'll go ahead and finish. 
You talking, Kent? Yeah, can you hear me still? We can hear you now, only but when you yeah, say we can what... hear you. Hold on. You can hear me now, right? Yes. I feel like I'm in a damn t uh, cell phone commercial or something. <laughs> I don't even know what's going on. You talking now, Kent? Because we can't hear you. Yeah, man, my my signal fucked up. But um, I can send it. I can send it to you, Drew, if you want to read it. All right, I'll do that for you. All right, all right. Gideon, you didn't have anything to add. Um, earlier, y'all, um, I was listening to the show. I had to uh, step away from the phone, but y'all were talking about this rat. And um, some experiences <laughs> that I had, I, I was really interested in. Um, so if you could just like reiterate that little part for me real quick. Marcus. Is he talking about uh, baby Albert? Yes. Oh, yeah. Fascinating, fascinating study. It, it had to do with um, conditioning, right? So. Prior to that, they were able to condition animals to behave in certain ways at certain times for certain points based on certain uh, external stimuli. And they wanted to see if they could train a person, I think it was Watson that did it, um, to be subjugated to the same conditioning that they did with animals, mainly oh, dogs. Man. And so what they would do is they would have baby Al Al Albert sit and they would bring certain stuffed animals and toys around. And every time they brought about a rat, they would uh, sneak, they, somebody would be behind them and they would make a very loud, traumatizing sound. Um, and it would trigger the natural responses in humans. Um, and, and he was conditioned with that for the rest of his life. Um, they ended up not going through the full study with him, but nevertheless, um, it's one of the earliest studies that um, explain human conditioning as a child and how it can affect you as an adult. They lost track of baby Albert after the experiment was done and they were able to find out who they were later on, who he was later on, and he still had that same visceral effect whenever he seen uh, rats. And his wife Describe some of the trauma and terror that he would experience um, oh. based on that well, well into his later years. And so um, I will uh, post that article again for you so you can read it. Um, it's 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 fascinating in that. That's interesting. Yeah, it's fascinating in that they have this example. Um, me personally, I'm glad they no longer do that with children. Um, but it's one of those experiments. Um, you know, sometimes I talk about they, like they don't only do an experiment maybe one time um, because ethics get involved. The damage done to people based on that, um, you know, is just too much. Um, um, the prisoner's dilemma is one of them. The one they did, the prisoner's thing in Stanford. They started it. They realized how terrible it was for people. They ended the experiment before it was done. Um, so, yeah, so that's that's what happened. Um, it has to do with we haven't I haven't actually talked about some. of. So we did this a show. Your brain is like an airport, right? The networks, right? I remember um, that. Yeah, we haven't really talked about some of these networks. But they're very the ones they found out are very, very interesting. So Ron had brought up about um, the computer chip being implanted. They found out about this network. It's the sensory motor network through brain surgery. And what they found out is that when they were doing brain surgery in this section, when they were stimula stimulated with electrodes, that people body movements would begin to move, right? And they felt as though they were controlling these movements, though they know that it was these electrical electrodes that were placed in their brain 
during brain surgery. Um, and the, the, when they do brain surgery, they tend not to put you fully under. Um, there's reasons why, because they need to be able to monitor to make sure they don't cut away something. Right. Um, so they needed to be active pumping okay. the brain. Right. right. And so they, they would put electrodes in there and realize that when they stimulated, this is during live surgery, that the sensory motory um, network, um, people, arms and legs and bodies would start to move. The strange thing about it is they believed they were controlling these movements. Um, and, and it ended up being tied to something called the cortical dopamine um, network, which we did discuss. So it's a lot of stuff in the brain that I can't wait to... Um, Divulgent. Yeah, the divulge a little bit more into. Um, hopefully, people will go with the journey with me. But it's a fascinating thing. But that's that's how they came up with the technology, begin to do that for um, for um, these electrodes that they're using now. Cool. That's part of the advancement. So you know they did this early on, and now technology is now using that scientific information to build things that help human um life as a whole all right i appreciate that marcus anytime bro so i was gonna um read what kent wanted to say about what is the mind so if there's any confusion maybe we can clear it up but it says the mind is a complex aspect of consciousness that encompasses thoughts, perceptions, emotions, memories, and reasoning abilities. It's essential. It's essentially the cognitive faculty of the brain that allows us to think, feel, and perceive the world around us. So that that's the mind, and, and the brain is more the, the physical aspect of all that. The neural neurons, neurotransmitter neuromodulators, different parts of, of the brain. Can you read that again for the for the slow people in the chat? The mind is a complex aspect of consciousness that encompasses thoughts, perceptions, emotions, memories, and reasoning abilities. It's essentially the cognitive faculty of the brain that allows us to think feel and perceive the world around us. Did you want to expound on that, Sabio? I don't think I need to. This is what I've been saying for the longest. It's the cognitive faculties or the neural transmitter, the synapses, and the chemical processes that is taking shape that is allowing us to do everything that we're doing right now. Yes, but I think I will push back and say I disagree that they're the same thing. They're in the same place, yes, but they're not quite the same thing. That That's what I was trying to reiterate. And um, that comes from the source materials we've been dealing with understanding how the mind is shaped. You you feel me? Because it has to do with people's personal experiences um, and also the experiences that they are exposed to by other people around them, their particular environments. And also it got into a more about their cultures, you know, like different cultures create different minds. That was a particular show. Um, yeah. And how people, um, I, I guess, would, would quantify their experiences um, and, and feelings and things like that. So did you want to speak more on that, um, Marcus? I think that was like chapter six or chapter seven when we were yeah. talking about those tribes. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so, you know, um, it, it really comes down to some called Quayla, right? Quala, Quala. Mm -hmm. And that's really where the, the issue is in in, at least the conversation is in science. Some of the questions are being asked. Um, and that is, why is an apple sweet to you and not to me? Mm -hmm. um, it, it, they would like to sum it up and say that it's solely based on um, neurological networks and things, but there then comes the problem of emerging property. 
um, which is that you could have fundamental laws at the base level, but these laws in operation together can create something uniquely different than what the laws imply. Um, traffic is like that, right? So you, you can't have traffic without people, cars, stop signs, roads, and so forth and so on in motion. Um, the laws of those motions, the thing that make a car go, does not directly tie to what traffic is. But when all these things are in operating at the same time, you have traffic. And so um, that that becomes part of the conversation, right? Um, there's some dispute about whether it is universal or, well, that's not true. That's really the theoretical. Um, if it's emerging property or not, and can it be reduced, right? Um, that's where the conversation is now. But ultimately, um, you could have, uh, I can give you an example. Um, if you look at an ant colony, the, the laws that rule an ant colony are pretty basic. Um, but when you have a certain amount of them, you get this congruate, beautiful interaction. And they're able to do things that fundamentally don't seem possible based on those uh, limited laws. Um, and you can look that up on YouTube. They got tons of videos about the emerging property of an ant colony. Um, and so that's that's the conversation with the brain and the mind, um, which is, you know, interesting. I can't wait to see some papers come down and um, describing that outside of the theoretical points at this time. So, so Mark, I have a question. Um, is our, or I should say, are our minds different than our awareness, or are they the same? I'm sorry, say that again. Are our minds, the fact that I have a mind, is it separate than the than the fact that I am aware, or is or are they the same? In other words, is awareness the same as as mind? Oh, um, <laughs> nah, I, I, I don't, I, I wouldn't say that that way. I think that that kind of um, minimizes the complexity of the conversation. Um, you can have, you can be, you can have, I don't know how to say this. You can have biological processes that take place that you are completely unaware of right. through a conscious mind, but your subconscious mind definitely is fully comprehending what's going on. So it depends on where where you draw the line between them two. Um, yeah. There's no there's no clear demarcation line, but there are plenty of studies that um, that exemplify this this process. Um, one of the key words you want to look at is something called priming. So if you look at some of the studies involving priming, you can kind of like uh, see where there, where that demarcation line gets kind of blurry. Can you define priming for the audience, Marcus? If not, I will in a second. Um, yeah, you, you can... Uh, pull up the thing for priming in, in neurology, Juju, if okay. you can. Um, give me a second. Uh, so, yeah, so that's one study you can look at. Then there's a fascinating study um, that they did involving uh, pheromones. They don't call it pheromones now. What um, they call them? <laughs> um, they call them uh, chemical tactic responses. Um, the reason, there's a reason why they moved away just from pheromones. Um, I, I can understand that. Yeah, so real, they're, go ahead. Real quick, let me let me plug this real quick. Hit, hit the thing, uh, Gigi, my fault. All right, man, so y'all see what it is, man, the greatest all tap, man. All right. She's gonna be engaged. In a serious debate, you know what I'm saying, Mr. Bari and Mr. I am Hotep, man, is a Sumerian, a Bantu language, man. 
That's going to be on Garfield Channel Sunday, March 17th, 2024, man. Two o'clock. That's going to be serious right there. Yeah, make sure y'all support Garfield. I mm -hmm. think this is going to be a hot debate. Mm -hmm. No, I think no, I don't think it's gonna be, it's, we're gonna figure out what the real is. We're gonna find out. Maybe we don't even have enough, you know, expertise to understand, right? What the kind of conversation gonna be, yo? But watch, yo, it's gonna be interesting, yo. That's gonna be real, real, real interesting, right there, yo. Uh, uh, at this point, I'm pretty sure that Asar gonna meet his match, yo. Shorty <laughs> ain't playing right there, yo. <laughs> Nah, he ain't playing, yo. I don't know already. I'm telling you, he ain't playing. All that stuff that the can get away with us, yo, he ain't ready to do it. Man, I'm team Osar for this one. What you talking about? I know you is. I'm team right information. <laughs> did did y'all ever man make sure y'all support that though? Did y'all ever ask what he, he was he was asking some good questions though, as far as how do we get around it? How do we get around our bias, yo? That's that I like that. Yeah, you you use the data, yo. The data help you get around your bias. I, I think that's a key point there. That's the only way you can get around your bias is the data, because a lot of things are counterintuitive. Yep. Yeah, yeah, but but people reject the data, so yeah. So you know, yeah, if you reject the data, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, and that's where we at with it. So yeah. I mean, you tired of beating a dead horse? You feel yeah, me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't defeat your your bias if you don't. Um, uh, if you reject the data, because you know what I'm saying, you can look at the person and he's looking jet black and all that, and you think he's such and such. <laughs> you think he's African, he'd be something, he'd be from the Adam and Island, Eastern European. You you done. The data would take care of that though. So yeah, scientific literacy, yo. Facts. Mm -hmm. so isn't that right. <laughs> mm -hmm. is argument isn't an argument valid on the other side as well? Nope. No. Yeah, no, we're not. Okay. Can, can we not? Okay, we're not. Oh, we're I'm gonna get into on what other side, side, though, Juju? What are you talking about? Other side? Question. I, 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 the, the, the Egypt conversation. Can we please get on prime? No, no, you always come on, Juju. You gotta let it flow. No matter what, you gotta let it flow, though, Juju. That you fuck it up if you don't. You gotta let it flow. What do you mean the other side? There is no other side. You get that, Juju? <clears throat> no, I mean, ain't no other side. I, I don't. I mean, I'm, again, I understand Juju's point, but just just real quick. So when when not the, other side. the other guys show when they show data. They haven't and information they haven't, like from yeah. from the meta like from the meta netter they as haven't. an example. They haven't. Well, let me finish as an example when they show that that information, and um, then then you would say, "Oh, that's not that's not." I wouldn't say that. Not I'm not. I'm not saying that. The experts are saying that's that. Not, but that's how they. I know, but that's how they take it. They, I know, they but they say, can take it like they want to take it. The experts are saying it. It's not me. They are going against the the expert material bro people yeah, that they, already they, did what they did but they, they didn't write the metal netter they're saying they're they're using no, listen, expert listen, material listen yo they you, didn't write the metal netter listen yo ain't you an engineer yo yes do you question the mathematical formulas you use that's been working do you question that no i don't okay okay yeah so you just proved the point yo no but you get this, it no, but what I'm saying the people the people who develop those mathematical formulas, I I, I say, okay, you're the experts. <laughs> they're the experts, right? I know, but, but what I'm saying is they're saying the people who, who translate God, the metal net are the God experts. Coming this they're saying they're the experts too. The voice of God. That's funny as hell. You understand what you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> they're, they're saying they're using experts. They use they use Christopher Errett as an example. They use the metal netter. They use they didn't use Christopher Eric. No, they didn't use Christopher Eric data right. They well, <laughs> I use Christopher Eric data right, brother. That's dude. That's I use Christopher Eric. Uh, I got his. I got two books. This book one, the first one. I got. I got the last one. I can clearly read. Yo, they flaming. Yo, they 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 they, they flim flaming. I understand your point. I understand your point. But they I, you probably exactly don't, bro. Thing. But I can tell you what. I'm gonna move forward in the conversation, yo. But I expect more out of you, bro. I'm just let you know. Yeah. It's not the other side, yo. It's one side, and that side is science. Simple. I understand what you're saying. I'm just saying that they they're making amen the exact same argument. Amen, amen to Judah. I'm gonna get out so I don't mess up the show. Clown. I just wanted yeah, to I, just I, say I, this I, one I, thing. I, I want to talk to you. Uh, you know, I want to talk to you. Um, I was talking to the dude in the chat. I just wanted to die. Are you good? I just wanted to say this one thing. Without those 
um, mental processes, without those synapses, this whole shit we we talking about the mind wouldn't even be talking. To, we wouldn't even be talking about it. So the That's brain would exist because dogs and cats and lions and bears they all have brain. They also have mental processes just like we do. They just can't what? Express them in words. So yeah, one of the fundamental differences is that we have uh, we have this, uh, uh, how should I say? We have this dynamic of uh, abstractness uh, that animals don't necessarily have or it hasn't necessarily been proven as such yet. So th that's one of the main differences between uh, a human's mind and any other animal. Um, and I think that was something that was just discussed in one of the last shows. Um, and, and yes, the abstractness has, has to deal with, you know, given um, objects function, like we give uh, paper the function of money, like that, that will, that, that, that's somewhat of an abstract, like we give agency to things that other animals do, don't necessarily do. Not that they can't, but I don't think that it fits, you know, that their reality in, in essence. So, um, but yeah, we always have the conversations about humans and whether we're exceptional beings that that has come up, you know, in, in this particular discussion. You know, how, how do you feel about that? How does the audience feel about that? Are humans exceptional animals compared to other animals? No. Nope. So. How are we exceptional? How are we different? Only because we can, because we can put abstract thoughts and we can manipulate our world a little better than they can. Had their evolutionary design or had their evolution called for, maybe they would be in the same situation we are. The evolution didn't call, call for it. So. I'm just going to say, I've been told you say, Bill, to be hitting the link on these brain shows because we went through all that. And I think you would be pleasantly surprised on what we actually said. Like, you know, <laughs> I mean, did we on, on the most part, we agree. You know, we, we don't think that we're exceptional. It, it, it's usually others who have not Delve into the 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 science of this, you know, who may think that, but once you understand the processing, the development, the function of the brain, and the, the evolutionary process of it, um, of all animals, then, mm -hmm. yeah, then you'll that get into, part, yep. um, but, yeah, we're not that exceptional. Um, well, I mean, but definitionally, definitely, definitionally, aren't aren't we except are human beings exceptional? But by, by if, definition, if, if you were to say that, then all animals are exceptional in their own way. Correct, I agree, Gideon. Well, what, give me give me an example of of something that uh that's exceptional about uh, I don't know, any a any animal. A dog can a dog can hear what you can't hear. Mm -hmm. But that's human exceptional. beings can make can make machines that can hear what dogs hear, though. Yeah, but dogs do it naturally. They don't I understand. Need I understand that. I understand we, that human beings so, can make so we, can make a so, device that can do it. Though. Right. Did you ask a question? So let me try to answer also. So I think that's the other thing. I, I, so maybe I don't know enough, but do do animals have culture? Because then, um, that's uh, I, from what I'm getting, that's a part of uh, our abstractness, also. You know, um, but we need it to function, right? Uh, by definition, by the one I learned in college. Uh, cultures, any and everything, man superimposed on nature for survival and well-being. So I, I think that the, our ability of culture may be um, Does it make us go far past some things because, you know, we know birds that can take uh, oh, different, man, you took it out my mouth, different things to create nests. So that will be a part of culture. Um, we know that birds have an ability to have quote-unquote language and uh, a simple form. That, that would be part of culture. So I mean, it, it's it's a lot of things we would have to like really dissect to get down to Correct. it. The overall picture, again, it goes to Gideon. Like we are every, I think every animal has its superiority or its exceptionalist exceptionalism, so to speak, right? Because like 
well, they can go deep in the ocean. We can't do that without, you know, uh, having the marines. And I'm talking about in our natural state. And I always say, so put a human and a lion in its naturalness in, in a space outside and, and see who wins. Uh, would we be ex ex superior then? I'm, I'm I'm saying, I'm just asking. But Well, I mean, if, if, if you're asking me if a human being was in a cage with a lion, you know, animal eat, you know, animal on animal, then no, the, the human being is going to lose. But if you, if you ask me that has, can human beings or have human beings basically subdued lions, the answer is yes. If we put lions in cages all the time. It's not the other way around. And that's you know due you know to what? what? Evolution. And that's due to evolution. So that, that so we still are don't mean you can't get ate by a lion. That we still don't mean the lion won't eat you. Of course, you in the, of course you Ron, in we are animal. exceptional. But every animal is exceptional. That lion will still eat you way. like you a piece of food. The question is, are we more exceptional? No. But what's more exceptional? This doesn't make any sense. I just I just told you. You, you said you said the dog can hear things that we can't hear, and I just said that we can make machines. We can make machines that can hear what dogs hear, but but dogs can't make machines that go to Mars. As but we can. Right. So that makes us exceptional, doesn't and it? And that's only do that's, 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 that's I don't that's, that's, that's only do the evolution. No. Had the dog no. one at a time. Hold on, Gideon. Had the dog evolved to think about going to Mars? The dog would be no, and that's the point. Ships to be going to Mars. Yes. Had evolution that's the point. calls for the dog to evolve to that point. I don't know what you're missing. Mm -mm. No, I don't know what you're missing. <laughs> Ron, let me explain it like this, Ron. That's our exceptional way. That's what I'm saying. So I said every animal is exceptional in their own unique way. That's not hard to understand, my brother. I think so, uh, brother, because what you're what you're talking about are oh, physical attributes that that different animals have. What what's the definition of exceptional? Uh, exceptional would be uh, something that's extraordinary, that's out of the ordinary. That's okay. how I would define it. How okay. would you define it? Exactly the same way. Extraordinary. Then, then it sounds like you, so, you agree so, with me. So, so, so every animal has its own extraordinary thing. Everyone. No, it, no, it's not extraordinary for a dog to be able to hear. Oh, my goodness. Why is that extraordinary for a dog to be able to hear at a high pitch, higher pitch than humans? That's because not do. all animals exhibit the same characteristics, bro. Uh, that's obvious <laughs> but we're talking about so, extraordinary. So you know, oh, being able to do something I can't, extraordinary. I can't argue it, with this conversation is weird it's not weird it's just that you guys so are so, so we're making sense because, because our frontal lobe developed further than theirs that's that's that that's makes us exactly unique. What Bobby is saying. that makes us unique I, i'm sorry i missed your question say it again Frontal lobe development makes us unique. Seems to seems to be that way. At this point, I'm not talking to you. So what? Why? Because you still don't get. No, because it goes saying. back. Because it goes back to something I said earlier in the conversation. Had the had the dog frontal lobe developed to the same point. Hours had the dog will be just as unique as us, as, as us, but you don't even get it. No, the, the dog's frontal lobe is not developed to the same extent as ours, right? Goes back to evolution. My conversation circles back to the first point I made. Damn, you slow. <laughs> I mean, saying, saying that doesn't make it so. You don't have to get upset. That doesn't make it so. I'm just saying that. I'm just saying that it, it, it appears to me, it's evident to me that human beings are exceptional compared to other animals. I'm not saying we're not animals. Of course we're animals. We're just more exceptional. I mean, that doesn't seem, that doesn't seem 
obvious to you guys? Let me um let me ask you this: Is unique and exceptional the same thing to you? Unique and exceptional? No, it's not the same. Okay, so what is the difference to you? I mean, kind of getting back to the to the brother who talked about the dog. The dog is uniquely equipped to have uh, high pitched hearing, whereas humans don't. But humans uh, are particularly exceptional. At, at creating things that can mimic the rest of the animal kingdom if they want to. And then go then even go beyond that, whereas other animals can't. And what I'm hearing is that, well, it's just because of their brain development. They, they haven't evolved yet. Well, chances are they never will evolve to that. Hey, Ron, you should go watch a thing called burn, The Bird Brain. You'll be surprised. I think I think how exceptional humans, you are. I think humans are unique animals. We're unique. It it happened that our uniqueness um, is in the, the ability to use abstract thought and create. But I would not um, take that outside of the basics of evolutionary processes this is what led us to survive and um, our uniqueness is still limited to the very basis of evolution a virus can kill us the same as again any other animal we are subjugated to the same fundamental laws of physics that everything else is now you may take that unique uniqueness to be exceptional um, that's exceptional based on the fact that we are the only homo sapiens sapiens left on the planet earth and that limits our ability to do a cross comparison um in, in some areas um with that uniqueness but I, I i look at it from a point of evolutionary scientists and and they're on the cusp of saying that while we are a unique and, and special type of animal, we are just another animal in the basis of the evolutionary process. And, and that that process hasn't reached a apex and that evolution doesn't have an apex. That's yeah, I, yeah I, uh, I certainly understand that, that we are animals on this planet, just like other animals. Uh, but I don't think there are other animals who are having these types of conversations that we're having. Again, you, you just took what, what would be unique. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, I, I, and I changed it to <laughs> and changed it to the other thing. So what made us unique is just that. It, it made us unique. But there's animals that can do quite a lot of things that are I'm sure there are unique to them. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, I'm sure and are. are you willing to call them um, exceptional? Well, I mean, when, when I look at other animals, if it's things that we cannot do, that we can't design some type of uh, mechanism and, or equipment or machine to do, then I would say, no, they're not, they're not exceptional in any way. But you, you don't get the point that you have to create something to do that, though. They do well, that that's, naturally. That, that's, that's, that's part of our exceptional. exceptionalism. Yeah, but that's exceptional that they do it naturally. You don't. Why, why do you say it's exceptional? You... <laughs> uh, is, is, a dog, can, is a dog the only animal on the earth that can hear at a high pitch? Are, the, are beavers... Are beavers creating dams? Is that exceptional? Uh, yeah, beavers beavers create dams because that's, that's what they do. That's sort of the same argument about. Is that high exceptional? Dogs high pitch hearing. Is that are, exceptional? Are insects no. exceptional? The fact that they can live in the no, inner. No, no, no. Beavers creating dams. <laughs> it's, it's unique. It's unique for. It gets back to it gets back to what are their what are their um, capabilities. And can they go beyond those capabilities? So again, 
So again, this can conversation build, can, can, can is a beaver about build a natural castle? selection. Can a beaver build a castle? This goes this goes back to what natural selection. Okay. Why are, why are we still talking? Every animal builds their own. Just because I don't understand house. your point. Every animal builds their own habitat, bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, every every animal is say, agree. Mm -hmm. So I don't I don't find that. And it suits itself. their evolutionary needs. No, what they can do is exceptional, naturally, like birds can fly, naturally. You got to make a plane. But that's that's what's exceptional, though. <laughs> the fact that I can make a plane. What 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 will happen to your plane though won't happen to that bird though. What do you what do you, what do you mean? Well, what do you won't mean? happen to that bird? Okay, your plane need that gas. That bird don't need that gas. Yeah, but again, the fact that I can your plane your plane can develop your plane can develop technical difficulties. That bird will not. Yeah, but that, that bird might have a, a lifespan yeah, but of, of nothing, five years. Bro. Whereas my plane, my plane will last twenty years. Oh man, I, I don't understand. I don't understand your point. A parrot point lives longer than a parrot. Damn near lives longer than a human being. You know that? Okay. Okay. But we have planes that, that go do, back. Do you to, find that exceptional? Have, Hold on. Do you find I, that exceptional? No, I don't find that exceptional. Oh. I have a plane. I can have planes that go back to a hundred years ago, right? Mm. I mean, what? That's what wonderful. Do you, I, don't, I mean, I'm not denying that that the different animals can do things that human beings can't do. I'm just saying that we can do Bro, you what they can do guy. and do more. You just a stop sign. I'm just a what? A stop sign. I mean, you can you can say those things because you're you're not not that, we will but be you're not, you're not saying anything. Of value. Doing, had our had our frontal lobe not developed. We would be doing the same no, shit no, animals. No. And, and I don't disagree with that. But but we do have that that highly developed frontal frontal lobe. Okay, so stop arguing in circles. Because if we you, agree you that it's a frontal lobe development, development, then all this talking about animals is about their frontal lobe developments. It's all about evolution. <laughs> That's a that's a nonsensical statement. That your frontal lobe development is the one that, is the thing that makes you exceptional, makes you different. You know, you you know, exceptional is just a human thing, though, right? Yes, because we think we can we can think in those terms. Of course, you know, is. you know, the lion, the lioness may think. That the lion, that the lion, that the lion running her pride, she may think he's exceptional. The lion may think she's exceptional. We don't know because we can't that's hear right. what lions think. That's right. That's right. But we know. But we know. So we this have conversation problems. to me is for special people who want to try to somehow deny <laughs> evolution. Somehow, I'm not denying evolution. I just told you. But you're, you're. I think when you when you run against a brick wall. Those, that's no the only thing you can use is like those, that type of language. You're the one up against the Ron, wall. This conversation are using exceptional to argue about animals, bro. And exceptional is just a human thing. Right. All humans can't even read. It just refers to something outstanding or extraordinary beyond the norm in terms of quality or performance, bro. bro. Ninja, that's a great point. All humans can't even read. So, so, so when you're comparing animals, it just doesn't even make sense. Like, uh, Marcus just said, bro, uniqueness. And name a name an animal that can read, though. Oh man, he fucking stops. You guys, you guys get frustrated because you you make these uh, non sequitur arguments, sign, bro. Your stop sign. Bro. Yo, them dogs be doing. Y'all seen them dogs? On the internet, they got the little push button thing. Figure, give, give them some ammo. Dog, give them some ammo, Juju. My point. Can give I finish my ammo. point? Can I finish my ammo. point, please? Please don't. Please don't do that. I, I, I'm sorry. I don't want to talk about Black Egypt, but don't do that. Thank um, you, Juju. 
Yeah. So, but anyway, I think it's kind of cute though, because we're talking about that. I mean, it's a form of understanding communication, which goes to language. So we're going to talk about it in animals. But if you go on like TikTok, I know on Instagram, it's this one uh, dog that I follow. These, it's two of them, actually. It's one um, younger black dude and then like this white couple. But they have these buttons and they train their dogs so their dogs can express themselves. <laughs> 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 right. That's so uh, the, the funniest one, <laughs> though, is like one of the friends of the, the, the white couple came over or was at the or whatever or was doing some type of I forgot what it was, but they were talking to the dog and there was like, oh, whatever, whatever, Charlie. Oh. I think it was like the dog's birthday. Happy birthday. And the dog went to the butt. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, bitch, bitch. You no. right? <laughs> like I fell out, but I remember that. I remember that. I that remember was the seeing same that. reaction to everybody. Like, you know, whoever it was, you know, the dog was like friend or whatever. But for this particular person, mm -hmm. the dog was like, uh-uh. And then the dog like sat there with like the, the resting bitch face, like looking like, oh hell no. Nah. But it was just hilarious. But I find that fascinating. Because we're talking about you know animals and them being able to talk, communicate, but and then having personalities, right? But then we have to say like, but to our standard, because animals have the ability to communicate. They just not might not be doing it with verbal speech and written language like humans. But that doesn't make it any less though. So that's all I had to add to it. But yeah, I want I want a dog and I want them dog buttons for real. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be training my dog to say, okay, you know my dog gonna be saying, hell nah, I nigga. Seen that video. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. This was funny. <laughs> okay. And yeah. Them huskies be funny too as hell too. But, it was um, a husky. It was a husky. <laughs> see? Yeah, boy. So yeah, but yeah, Ron. Exceptional is it's it's, a, it's really a human thing. It's it's often used to describe people, achievements, experiences, or qualities that stand out positively. That's human thing, bro. It's nothing to do with other animals, bro. So yeah, so, so so we talking about uniqueness. Yeah, that's a unique thing that we can do. Yes, and and other animals have their unique things that they can do. Like you, you ain't finna live under the earth like a like an insect, bro. You can't do that. That's that's unique. You feel me? The, the yeah, science I, I, is saying I, 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 that a roach can withstand a freaking um, nuclear bomb. You can't. That's unique. Like there's certain things that's just unique, bro. And and there's certain things if you want to talk about exceptional that they're, they're exceptional in their own unique way. Like, that's not hard to understand. I said it, bro. <clears throat> Sounds like a, a bit of semantics going on, though. All right, bro. You want to say semantics? You playing semantics now because you're still going to argue. I don't know. I'm not arguing anymore. I I, I think I've given a, a clear explanation of the exceptional and people have given of human explanations and you're still arguing. Yeah, but the, the problem is, is that there's really no difference between unique and, and exceptional technically when you look at it from synonyms so if you say that this animal is unique you're also saying they're exceptional thank you that's actually the word so so it's not us playing semantics it's you you made a dividing line that doesn't exist so i made a divide uh, a dividing line that, that doesn't, doesn't exist yeah between uniqueness yeah. and exceptionalism yeah, and exceptionalism yes yeah, so they're synonyms mm-hmm so when you say that this animal is unique but it's not exceptional, no, that's that's you you're creating a line that language doesn't exist. But all, all but animals, animals, all animals are unique. All animals so are then unique. they're exceptional. No, by, by the definition <laughs> that we were talking about, they're not exceptional, they're just unique. All right, bro. <laughs> okay, Ron, but uh, again, um humans are animals, but nevertheless. Uniqueness and exceptional um, are synonyms, right? So I, I mean, that's just what it is. I mean, you can argue with the English language. What, what you want me to say? No, I, I, I don't want to argue with the English language. I'm saying that uh, we can do things that they can't do, but we can do, but but uh, they do things that we can mimic through our abilities, through our some things, some things, and again, it it doesn't. 
you're, you're equating the benefit of us having this thing as being somehow or another different than the benefit of them having what they had. But uniqueness and exceptional mean the same thing. So as soon as you say that there's an animal who has a uniqueness, then you're saying the animal is exceptional. Humans are included in those animals that have uniqueness. That's all. So, so we're talking about degrees of uniqueness, then, right? I'm not make. I'm not willing to make that that degree. I'm. I, that's beyond my expertise, or whatever you want to call it. I let the experts make that call. But Lisa Barrett okay. and them saying that no, yes, humans are unique, but they're just another type of unique animal. That's what. That's what she said. Now, whether you agree with her or not, that's on you. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's fair. I mean, I, you know, I, I think that uh, our uniqueness as human beings is, is on, a, on a higher order than, than the uniqueness. We want to use that word of animals, but that's, that's me. Well, that's, that's called human exceptionalism, and that's, there's a lot of pushback against that because it led to some very Thank dangerous you, concepts. So you can look up human exceptionalism and look at what happened when humans thought they were the center of the earth. Um, when they had a heliocentric or uh, earth-centric type of idea, it's not nothing new. I mean, it's, it just is what it is. Most um, religions and or social, cultural, spiritual systems um, tend to center humans as the pinnacle of existence and creation. Um, so that's not a new concept. That's actually a very antiquated idea. But, you know, everyone has their own take to a degree on it. And again, um, you know, the experts discuss these type of things. So it is what it is. But uh, the, the key to that is that unique and exceptionalism is not different. So I just want to say that this is the Interactive Brain Show, so the link is in the chat. Feel free to hit the link and join the panel. And yeah, speak your chat, speech. Talk your talk, you know what I'm saying? Pop your, but, you know, <laughs> it's the Interactive Brain Show. So go ahead and do that, um, but I don't care how anybody feels about it. The only rule that I have is that you cannot talk about Black Egypt. Talk about West. West Africa, if you talk about anything Africa, and yeah, that's my that's the rule, and I'm sticking to that. So, so we are um, in in concept of some of the conversations we've been having. Um, I, I am working on a African American history, so we'll be. I'm going to attempt to go from early in West African history with the interactions between um, Europeans. Um, yeah, buddy. Um, I, 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 even though there's some, some nuances to that, dealing with Islam and, mm -hmm. and there's some evidence that even during the early Byzantine, Byzantine Empire, they had gold from Ghana being milled and mined and um, weighed and structured in, in Ghana and then shipped up to uh, North Africa into Europe. I don't want to really go that far back, but, but there, we are coming to a point where we will be discussing um, African-American history, um, starting with the early points of Europeans in West Africa, and then coming up to this point to address some of the misconceptions that uh, the pseudo killers have been hearing in some of these wild streets, YouTube streets, and TikTok streets, and Instagram yeah. streets. Um, so I hope y'all get ready for that and, um, you know, just see what that's about. Hopefully, y'all join us for that too. Um, there's some other shows in the working too that I think many people may enjoy coming up. So, you know, just stay tuned. Uh, make sure y'all subscribe, hit the button, the bell, so that y'all can get notified 
Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I just wanted to say real quick. Yeah, we are having some um, some new shows coming up, of course, as we did for Black History Month, because we did have some shows on Black History. Y'all just chose to watch other stuff, <laughs> especially our Galaxy and Beyond. Y'all should go ahead and check out the shows we did for Black History Month and learn about some Black scientists. You know, black and continental African scientists. That that was our contribution, and we paid tribute to all of those past, present, and present and future. Because uh, I think Clarice Phelps would be kind of future. She ain't even got her PhD, and she's always already making history. Uh, she's actually a young black woman who found an element on the periodic chart. So go figure. Um, but we do have some stuff coming up for Women's History Month. Uh, we already had one Women's History show. Uh, we did a tribute to uh, Deborah Hurd, a PhD candidate, and also one of the founding members of the William Leo Hansberry Society, um, also part of the Nile Valley Collective. So we did pay tribute. We, we uh, pay tribute to women um, in expertise is, is what that was. And we'll be doing a little more of that uh, coming uh, soon. But I do look forward to um, Marcus's show Um I'm excited to, you know, be a part of that. Of course, got to be a part of that when it comes to African, African-American history and how we got here, you know, and how it started. Because I think, um, I think, Marcus, what is it? The idea is that, you know, it was kind of like a linear thing, like it's just from point A to point B. And that's not how it was, right? Because uh, you had Europeans and uh, the continent of Africa long before the, the slave trade started. Like they had some stuff going on within the continent, you know, we got to talk about, well, you're here on other platforms, but you know, about the, was a, let me not mess up the word, but the Bozales and the Ladinos or whatever, the, 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 the savage African and the Christianized, you know, African. Um, and some of those implications we'll get in in the, the Iberian Peninsula connection, because yeah, I think when we're talking about, you know, you know, the slave trade, we, we skip those steps and those steps are the beginnings of the beginning. So yeah, I'm, I'm excited for, for that, but yeah, we're going to do this for, you know, for a few more minutes, maybe like 20 more minutes, maybe 15. So if anyone wants to hit that link, hit that link and, you know, go ahead and pop your, you know, want to hear what you're talking about, what you thought about some of the content that we've had besides you know, that conversation that I've banned. Um, but no, we want to hear about it because we've been dealing with the brain show and we've been having the show on our galaxy and beyond. So tell us what you like to see also. Tell us what content we create that has to do with scientific literacy. Yeah, we're all for that. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and jump off, guys, but I appreciate you giving me the opportunity again to uh, to be up on your platform. So thank you, uh, Juju, Marcus. As always, and we appreciate, appreciate your and I think this was, uh, I think this was a, an exceptional show, pun intended. That was good. <laughs> that was a good one. You're so you're funny. I love it. <laughs> pun intended. See. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, boy. That's that's cute. Yeah. So um. It's funny the show can be exceptional, but not the other animals. That's mm -mm, don't do it. <laughs> don't yeah, do it. <laughs> I'm gonna do it, Juju. You know me. <laughs> Go ahead, Marcus. <clears throat> so before we get out of here, I want to um, bring in some very interesting points. So um, if y'all remember the Brain Show, we did something about the dopamine. Uh, network and we talked about how there's four or five different well it's four right now a dopamine highway <laughs> yeah and how that that plays a part i think we, right. we um we touched on it and we can look at it from multiple facets of conversation um when we talked to i brought up about the um sensory motor cortex and the cortical um, pathway that cortical pathway is part of that dopamine pathway it still has to do with that stinging dopamine. Um, but there's a, a therapy that's out now that has to do with dopamine as well. And it's, it has to do with... Um, <clears throat> there's 
prediction models in the brain, networks that have to do with prediction. And then there's another set that we call error, error management theory. Error management theory, we did an interview like with Dr. Andy. Yeah, Go we did ahead. an interview with uh, Dr. Andy. Andy um, Thompson, ladies and Dr. gentlemen. Dr. Andy that, Thompson, correct. About that interview. Um, yeah. Make sure y'all watch the interview. And in there, he he briefly touched on the error management. I mean, the um, yeah, the error management system. So we live in a I, I don't know how to say it. Well, it's it's known in the avenue of invention and industry. Um, we could it, it, example would be this: um, we could build cars that are as sturdy as a tank. Mm -hmm. But the consequences of that would be the expense, right? And so then we, we use a practice that they found through evolutionary psychology and sociology um, that you would err on the side of caution, which is you would uh, build cars that are safe enough in range of survival but still affordable for mass production another example is and i, I want to say this to the ladies it's not a justification of the behavior but it is an acknowledgement that this is part of this error management theory and that is um men tend to look at women natural interactions more sexualized than necessary. And it seems like it seems like that would be uh, what, what would evolution have to do with that? But if you think about it, we're talking about um, reproduction, right? So in the error management theory, if one out of four girls um it's better to hit the one, take that one opportunity, even if I had to go through four women to get to it, if y'all can understand. So you had a bar, um, a girl looks your way, you see her smile, and you would overinterpret that smile as she may be interested in, right? Um, and there's a whole statistic analysis about why this is going on in men. And it has to do with the chance of reproduction. Right. So you would err on the side of caution, which is saying um, she may be interested in me better for me to approach and see and take the rejection than if she was and she wasn't. Um, another example of the error management theory is um, if you're walking in the ground, we use this all the time and you see a snake, you jump first. I mean, you see a stick, you would jump first and then confirm if it was a snake or not. Again, error management. Better to err on the side of caution that it is a snake and get away than that the error in the, in the side that it is it's a stick. Well, you understand what I'm saying. Better to err in the side that it, the stick is a snake than if the stake is a stick. Because if it is a snake and you didn't jump, you die. So that's error management theory. But now they're using it as psychotherapy to right. help errors in prediction so these two things get get combined together error management theory and the prediction model to help with people with either mental illnesses and they are actually starting to use it for um addiction can i slow you down a little bit though sure go ahead when you talk about error error management and talked about that um, example with the stick, but that goes back to evolutionary processes, which I think is important to, to state, you, you know, um, and the brain's predictive ability uh, for, for, for the, 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 the whole uh, reason of survival, right? It, that's the whole purpose. So, yeah. And I just feel like, like once we're learning this, we're, we're also seeing a whole bunch of things that was for, you know, our uh, evolutionary development or survival or whatnot are now kind of being counterproductive. But I just kind of want to thought that because, you know, we don't necessarily need that like that for survival. You feel me? Because we, we've 
uh, built things in our culture to to fortify against those 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 things that that deemed um, that deemed uh, not advantageous to our our our, our safety or well being or our life, so to speak. Does that make sense? Absolutely, because if you well, that's another thing, right? Because the we talk about something like uh, ADHD, right, which is mm -hmm. heavily over. Maybe it may be overly um, diagnosed, but in uh, there's some evidence that suggests that in the <laughs> Rift Valley, when you had to, um, you needed that 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 spur of energy to constantly be moving as a survival trait, right? That that helped you survive. Mm -hmm. um, these wild changes in environment um, is a prime example. Another thing, the dopamine receptors, because we talked about that, um, how um, it creates cravings for fats and sugars. Correct. Another right? evolutionary process. Another evolutionary process. Now you have advertisement and businesses mm -hmm. that use that craving to produce <laughs> unhealthy habits by adding fats and sugars. McDonald's got sold uh, uh sued for adding fats and sugars to French fries. Um, well, them McDonald's French fries be busting though. What they do, they do, they'll get you every time. <laughs> they get you every time. That's all I want is some fries and a milkshake so you can dip the fries in. Um, yeah. so you, you know, <laughs> and and knowing these things can help your brain predict a little better. Mm -hmm. Um, so in science, right, we do generalities, and then these generalities get um, analyzed for causes. So in a new series we're going to do about death of expertise, he brings this point up, mm -hmm. um, and he uses this in this way. Um, on average, Asians are shorter than Americans. That does not mean that there aren't exceptions to that. You may have some Yao means. Right. Out there who are All not mofo. tall, um, but overall, generally, that's the thing. Then you look at some of the differences in genetic coding, environment, diet to see what could cause that. Um, that's how, in in general, science works in trying to analyze data. Well, a lot of times they find things by accident, mm -hmm. right? And, and some of these early experiments revealed some very troubling things about people. Um, I gave y'all example, baby Albert. But believe me when I tell you, there are a lot more out there. They had one where they had a child raised with a chimp. Did oh, not go boy. well. That did oh, not oh, go okay. over well. Um, Marcus, what about some of the stories we hear about children being raised with different animals? Maybe not on purpose for the sake of experiments, but like, is there any validity to that? Have they, do they have any like, you know, documentation of those instances or is that all just what they call, um, uh, what they call them? It's just fantasy, right? It's just urban uh, myth, urban legend. Yeah, I haven't seen anything done or any evidence to that. Okay. They do have things like tribes that coexist somewhat with animals. Right, 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 right. Um, like there's some examples where there's I think it's like a bird or some type of yeah, I think it's a bird who um shows humans where a certain type of honey is. I know that's right. And they share it, right? The toucan. Um, <laughs> I think that's in uh southeast and central Africa, where that happens at along the savannah area nevertheless so you have things like that um mm -hmm. but I, I i haven't came across any specifics where a child was found by uh living with a pack of wolves you know what i'm saying because yeah. we done heard and yeah. seen the movies and stuff yeah you know no, I, mean? I haven't i haven't <laughs> seen that a real you life have, i think those are like have examples of especially in asia I guess parts of Africa too, where uh, small primates are kind of like raised together with children, similar oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. With, with dogs, but nothing, um, nothing. Um, I haven't seen anything. Maybe Susso, no. Okay. Well, I just want to really give a shout out to the chat. 
especially the last 10 minutes, they didn't had a whole discussion on whether <laughs> who would win a lion and an elephant. <laughs> that was an awesome discussion. I'm team elephant, but you know. You know Ellie got it. <laughs> nah. Yeah, man. One on one, one on one. What, what, what we not nah, don't move the goalposts. We said lions and elephants. I mean, the hippopotamus now, nah. nah, the hippopotamus don't play. We seen a hippopotamus though, a uh, wreck of alligator trying to eat one of the baby hippos. Yeah, boy. Yeah, but I said, yeah, yeah, them hippopotamus ain't no joke either. But a hippopotamus and a lion. So you think a hippo would be, I mean, a hippopotamus and an elephant. So you think the hippo got the elephant? Oh, oh yeah, they the most they the most dangerous. Well, thing I know they yeah, dangerous. Yeah, them hippos, man. Boy, yeah, they yeah, the most, boy, yeah. Yeah, they the most dangerous in in Africa in Africa right now. Like they they no joke. I wouldn't want to cross them. <laughs> I wouldn't, I wouldn't either. Them. Yeah, boy, we seen them yeah. charging boats and stuff. Like, cause I watch all these like nature uh, shows and channels, you know. Them safaris, boy, them safari people, they get real comfortable. I think that's a little too much comfort for me. I don't think I'm taking no safari when I go there. I'll pass on that. Man, I don't see it. Too up close to the damn lioness jump up inside the damn. Yeah, you see that line? Like, what the hell? Nah. Like, hey, Jenny, I see you, Bill. I'm coming, Bill. Oh, I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's wild. Um, maybe we can get on that one day, but yeah, that's, that's yeah, pretty dope. Team Elephant uh, and, and Hippo as an honorable mention. <laughs> uh, but, you know, we almost at the three-hour mark, and, you know, we don't want to run a marathon. Uh and yeah, so I was gonna allow you all to have some some final words, and uh, we'll be back next Sunday for another exciting um, interactive conversation on the brain. Unless we start um, a death of expertise, which I really want to get into. Yeah, I need to get reading. Uh, go ahead, Gideon. Let me. Primary uh... source. Don't even know what a primary source is. Or a secondary or tertiary. <laughs> you cute though. You wasted all your you wasted your whole body budget to do that. That's funny. Oh, isn't that cute? <laughs> just, just these people be wilding, boy. It just it's real funny. Yeah, everybody, just stay tuned to the pseudo killers. We got the real information. You already know. PK on deck. So um, I've, I've, I've hunted down for a perfect, oh man, I forgot to get that Ralph Ellison quote. Oh, you talking about the, go ahead and read it off. I gotta, I gotta pull it up. Um, you talking about the truth about truth and lies? Yeah, I put that in. That's not right. Ralph Ellison. They, oh, don't, even know where that, they don't even know where that quote actually came from. Go ahead and read that one though. We like that one too, but I'll wait. Where First, let me read the Ralph Ellison quote. Do um, your thing. So he says, and this is about America and just the position we in now. Um, on the moral level, I propose we view the whole of America life as a drama enacted on the body of a Negro giant who, laying trust up like Gulliver, forms the stage in a scene upon which and within uh which the actions unfolds. That theory about Gulliver is a, is a mytho mythological story where a giant goes walking around certain areas and they end up tripping him up and tying him down to the ground and kids would play on top of him. Um, and he compares that, that giant um, being tripped up and, and held down where children would play on as America and treating black African bodies um, in the development of America. Mm. And so in, in that quote, I, I it, it is a sensitive subject to me about the position of black America and the methods that we can use to better our overall position. And we will be discussing some of the mechanisms that led us to the place that we're in and some of the philosophical faults 
that came out of it, such as Pan Africanism, Black mm. Nationalism. Get into it. Um, integration. <laughs> right. Um, the difference in some of uh, Black conservatives and socialism and communism. These are really late developments, but they have essence early on. And so we hope that we'll be able to uh, tackle that subject thoroughly so that people can get a good understanding of African history, Black American history, and even uh, history of the diaspora as a whole, because uh, there's so much interaction between the Caribbean, um, Europe, uh, America as a, both North and South and Central America, the two continents, and the islands around them. Um, that I think we should talk about. Nevertheless, let me leave y'all with my quote. The truth has no defense against a fool determined to believe a lie. Shout out to the pseudo killers. I think we had a wonderful show. And with that, we out of here, y'all. <laughs>